everybody welcome it's already of Hardy's corporate fiction how you guys doing today happy wednesday happy hump day of course uh gonna have an interesting show um before that just a little bit of housekeeping um uh first is uh mike uh he had his appointment yesterday um overall he's 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 doing okay uh you know He's lively. He's a little brat um, as a one year old uh, kitten or cat, one year old kitten will be. I mean, is he still a kitten? Or, or would he be like just a young cat? I don't know. At a year old. I don't know. Anyway, uh, the one thing is, I, uh, I did provide them with a um, stool sample and the results came in. And yeah, he's got three parasites. Um, uh, one is the uh, the one I suspected, which is the tape worm, but he's also got round worms and also uh, Giardia. It's a bacteria like Giardia, Giardia. I, I don't know how to, I forget how to pronounce it, but it starts with a G. Somebody, somebody in the comment section on the uh, post uh, um, named it. Uh, they gave him his uh, dewormer, um, Giardia. OK, there we go. Uh, they gave him his dewormer at the vet, and then in about three weeks, I need to give him his, uh, this uh, like a syringe of uh, like this, this liquid uh, medication in three weeks. Um, then I uh, have uh, then they also gave uh, Winston um, a prescription as well, which I gave to him last night. Um, same thing. Uh, then they are they. Uh, also prescribed a separate medication specifically for the Giardia. Um, that I gotta go. I'll, I need to go pick up from them um, at the vet. So I'll probably uh, pick that up on um, Saturday. So uh, this is thing. Like this is I, like I think I said before. This is a first for me. Archer, neither Archer nor Winston ever had this issue um, with worms. So or fleas or for that matter, they were both indoor cats. But uh, people say that even indoor cats can have this anyway. Uh, but I, I've got to get the feeling that uh, Mike probably had this um, since before I before I picked him up. Uh, but overall, he's doing OK. He's doing good. Um, you know, uh, so, so nothing, nothing too bad there. Um, uh, OK. Hold on a second. Uh, Thea, tech, uh, check uh, the moderator uh, channel. Um, anyway, so we so this is so what's ah, oh my goodness what's what's on the schedule for today? Well, this is about an attorney, <laughs> Grandia too. This is about an attorney uh, who is also uh, apparently a First Amendment auditor. I I am aware of another attorney who's a First Amendment auditor, but he's out of Texas, um, not Oklahoma, which is where this is from. So Thea sent me a link to Unclean Hands' uh, latest video that involves this guy. Uh, his name is Ron Durbin, and he uh, was... Uh, and yeah, he's a First Amendment auditor slash attorney. So I put I pinned uh on I pinned in the chat a link to Unclean Hands' video to give him the credit, of course. But uh, let's switch video, let's switch scenes here. I have a copy here of the amended complaint that the Oklahoma Bar Association uh filed against him. Um. And we're going to go through a bit of it. We're not going to go through everything because there's a lot to go through. But already, the guy doesn't exactly say the whole truth in a lot of his videos in regards to this uh, complaint against him. Um, but I feel like we, 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 something we should, you know, we come to expect, you know. <clears throat> so this, uh, uh, his channel um, is called Gorilla Publishing. Um, I was able to just do a Google search and find out which um, channel he is. Uh, this is one of his videos that I, I was looking at before I went live. 
of him allegedly uh, being assaulted by a cop. Um, I also looked at some of his other live streams. Uh, apparently, James Freeman um, collaborates with him a lot. Um, and he also posted videos of the his reaction to the... Um, to the announcement that he's been suspended. So as of April 8th, uh, 2024, uh, the Oklahoma Supreme Court granted the Bar Association's uh, request for an emergency interim suspension. Uh, it's not, but as you know, it's an interim suspension. It's not permanent. Uh, it's uh, it's a suspension, you know, pending the outcome of this case. But Ron kind of plays fast and loose with the language here. And so it's kind of like, yeah, what, what should we what should we expect? You know what I mean? He even actually did a breakdown of Chile's uh, trial, which I haven't. I, I you see the, the, the right here that says I watch it, but I did not kind of skim through it. I don't really know what he means. Um, but he says, like, this is his, I got suspended for free speech. No, he didn't. Uh, part one and part two. We can take a look at that for sure. Um, and also compare what he says here with what the docket says. Because I have right here, this is the docket for his complaint, the, the bar complaint. And it has every single, and every single filing is available to download, which I have, which I've done. Or not everyone, but more the but more so the the more pertinent ones: the motions to dismiss, the responses, the motions, the answers, the complaints, the amended complaints, um, the orders, etc. Those I, you know those ones, um, the more substantive uh, filings. I uh, you know I, I got and I downloaded. <clears throat> These are some of the news articles saying that he has uh, his license is suspended. Um, his him speaking about the suspension, and also I have for also for reference is the. These are the uh, rules governing disciplinary proceedings. This is the, so basically these are the rules, the rules of procedure for, you know, uh, complaints filed against attorneys. And here is the Oklahoma, um, Oklahoma rules of professional conduct. So from here, you're able to cross reference and see what exactly is the bar association alleging that he violated in terms of the RPC. Uh, so. This began. Um, this began on um, September. Oh, I'm sorry, not September. Uh, this began in August, I believe, was the when the first complaint was filed. Uh, by the. Uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, this was August twenty, August 11, twenty twenty three, filed by the Oklahoma. Bar Association. I know you probably can't see it because it's pretty small, but let me um Okay, there we go. <clears throat> so we're gonna go here. Uh <clears throat> so he this is the start. And so they have like I think at least 15 counts against him. Um, this is like, I guess count one, this is count eight, count nine. Oh, that's it. They only have uh, nine counts. Well, the amended complaint adds like six more counts. <laughs> um, it's 69 pages long. Nice. And they are alleging, where did, he, where did they have it? They are alleging that he violated, that he violated. Where was it? Where did I see that? Um, oh my goodness, I'm sorry. Ah, dang it, I thought I saw them uh, uh, where they alleged that he violated, like they have the entire list of all of his violations. Oh, well, never mind. All right. So a lot of also what makes this guy important or not important, but more what um, put this guy on the 
the consciousness of Tulsa, Oklahoma, or Oklahoma in general. Uh, it had to do with his work regarding um, Oklahoma and Oklahoma's uh, reg uh, regulatory agency regarding um, um, marijuana. I believe if somebody could confirm, I believe mar uh, in Oklahoma, marijuana was legalized, right? And so the um, a lot of his uh, grievances are and are surround um, his work with dispensaries against the uh, the uh, regulatory agency uh, for Oklahoma that deals with mar uh, marijuana. <clears throat> so this one, uh, count one, Malone grievance. Uh, they working on state questions related to medical marijuana. Okay, medical medical marijuana. Medical marijuana. They said state initiative petition eight eight eleven on April second, twenty twenty. The OBA received a grievance from Malone alleging respondent threatened her and her members in her group with financial ruin and conducted himself in a hostile and unprofessional manner. Malone further further alleged that uh, respondent attorney. Uh, Dublin has become a bully within the cannabis industry and expects people within the industry to do what he says and what he says and do it how he says. He claims to be an expert of cannabis, but in reality, he has an overinflated ego that makes him think everybody should or does worship him. April 6, 2020, I mean, uh, a copy of the grievance. Uh, they, they mailed him a copy of the grievance and, his and advised was opening the matter for formal investigation. On May 4th, uh, they received a response from him denying the allegations um, and that the actions he complained of were an exercise of his rights to voice his political opinion. Please know that that's going to be a recurring meme uh, throughout this, that everything that he, uh, that he is going to say that everything that he's done or that he, he's alleged to have done um, was within his First Amendment rights. <clears throat> On May 22nd, respondent engaged in a Facebook Live session on uh, the, his law firm's page where he made profanity-laced comments and disparaged Malone by calling her and the others in the group the idiots that are behind A11, A12, and A13, the petition. Uh, one of their leaders is an absolute pathetic human being, and I'm going to burn that business figuratively, not literally, to the ground. <laughs> um... Hey, Nimrod, thank you for the five ninety nine uh, euro. Uh, they're doing good. They're doing good. Uh, he called her a freaking idiot, saying that uh, because Malone um, said that she was threatening to file another complaint. Uh, he told this audience that when he got the letter from the bar that says he's 100% exonerated, which I fully expect to be because I did absolutely nothing wrong. Um, I'll read you what she wrote, and you guys can read it for yourself. So if you want to take a minute as an aside, go to rate her dispensary on Weed Maps and every other website, and we should do business with those kind of people. So, oof. Uh, Malone was an absolute piece of work and a POS, so there's my opinion that the Bar Association has a problem with that. They, too, can go blank themselves. People like that idiot are to be out of business. Uh, we're going to have protesters in front of her dispensary as soon as I get the letter back from the bar. I'm going to sue uh, lawsuit for libel. Man. If uh, people like Malone can shut me up for filing a bar complaint. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, on May 20th, they received another grievance from her. Uh, saying that the behavior is escalated and provided a flash drive containing a video of his li Facebook live session on May 22nd. <laughs> she advised that she feared for her safety. On June, thir thir on June 3rd, 2020, the OBA mailed responded a copy of Malone's second grievance advising his open matter for formal investigation and requested, requested a written response. On June 26, Respondent provided his response to his new law firm. Respondent expressed dismay that the OBA had not closed uh, her first complaint. 
because he had not made any threat in violation of his duties. Uh, he advised that with regard to his Facebook posts, uh, where he asked, can you afford to fight me like the 807 people, making clear that litigation is expensive, bring it to some decision is not a violation of rules of professional conduct, if it were. Every lawyer that has sent a pre-litigation filing letter is guilty of the same. Uh, so this is his response in defense of, you know, his um, antics on Facebook. Uh, in his re written response, he expressed his fa uh, failure to dismiss was overly concerning, and it seems the bar association maybe attempted to stifle political speech. Uh, with regards to social media comments, he said, certainly I may choose to use more colorful language than some lawyers, and I may choose to present myself in a different manner. Being different is not a violation of RPC, and I would venture that, I guess, that you... Even you have heard lawyers use similar language. Some may only choose to go uh, in private behind closed doors, but I personally operate under the belief that it can be an effective form of communication in the right circumstances with the right audience. Okay. In fact, as of the drafting of this letter, um, look at all this clout that I have. Um, I have so much clout because I'm a clout goblin. Look at my sub count. Um... With regard to fi uh, rule 5.4 of the discipline uh, rules of uh, di uh, rules is it governing disciplinary uh, disciplinary procedure. Wait, right? Yeah. Sorry. Matters uh, acknowledges in his response that the rule states matters contained in grievances submitted to the association and statements oral written shall be privileged. Litigation or the threat of litigation by respondent lawyer against the person filing agreements by the, by reason of such filing may be grounds in and of itself for discipline. Oh no! God. So he so he flagrantly violated. Uh, 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 he uh, flagrantly violated his uh, uh, disciplinary rule by threatening to sue. Um. This lady for filing a grievance against him, and he did it on Facebook Live. <laughs> oh no! Uh, on July twentieth, twenty twenty. So this is about uh about a month after. Respondent met with OBA to respondent. So this is him. Uh, Durbin met with OBA to discuss the grievance. Respondent was apologetic and expressed remorse for his actions. He advised the OBA that he had been under an unusual amount of stress due to health issues, financial strain caused by COVID-19, affecting his business investments, and from years of engagement, in protected and contentious divorce and custody battle. <clears throat> At the OBA's meeting with Respondent, it was explained to him that while he does have the right to free speech, he also has a duty as an attorney to represent the OBA in a professional manner. It was discussed with Respondent that his public comments on his law firm's Facebook page wherein he threatened Malone that he was coming for her and her business and he was going to sue her for filing a bar complaint against, against it may be in violation of his professional duties. It was also discussed in his Facebook Live sessions where he used abusive, threatening, and foul language reflected on him as a member of the OBA in the legal profession as a whole. <laughs> Respondent stated that although he, he, he made the statements, he did not think it through. He took full responsibility for his actions and comments that at the time and admitted that his statements on his page were inappropriate. So apparently, I guess at this meeting, at this in-person meeting with members of the OBA, he did a complete walk back of uh, his defiance, of his defiance, of defiant responses to the grievances against him. A respondent was asked about counseling and agreed to seek anger management sessions with a therapist. He's open to writing an apology to Malone and promised to refrain from uh, promised to refrain from acting in an unprofessional manner on social media. Uh, remember, this is um, grievance number one of nine, and this is the original complaint, not the amended one, which adds more. <clears throat> The respondent's uh, misconduct violates the provisions of Rule 4.4a, 4.4a, 8.4a, or RPC, and Rules 1.3 and 5.4 RGDP, and warrants the imposition of professional discipline. And then next, 
This is uh, the Milstead Grievance. This is back in 2015. Oh, no, um, he, uh, no, uh, this is in 2017, where he filed, apparently he represented a, a mother and child uh, who were involved in a car accident. In August, he filed a petition on their behalf and apparently stopped communicating with his clients until uh, 2019, when the, uh, the mother... The mother's family found out that their case was dismissed without prejudice in February of 2019. Um, he called them up. Uh, the husband called them up after learning that the case has been dismissed, and he responded promise he would refile uh, the lawsuit within a week. After months without uh, the case being filed, the family visited the office unannounced on, in August and confronted him about his lack of communication and failure to refile. This is, a, this is a big no-no. You're supposed to keep in regular contact and communication with your client. Uh, yeah. Um, in September, he refiled the case, but then ceased communication uh, with the, the, the family again. And then uh, next August, so almost a year later, another attorney filed an entry of appearance on behalf of the family. On August 25th, he filed a motion to withdraw, citing health issues and falsely claiming that Milstead had been notified of his intent to withdraw. The Milstead learned of Garrett's involvement in the case and the response to withdraw from the case by searching OSCN. And then in September 2020, they received a grievance from the Mil Milstead alleging that in the five years, a respondent represented her and her child. She had only met with him twice. So apparently, so apparently this Garrett individual uh, attorney has also not been contacting her, uh, contacting the family. Count three, the Jilsing grievance. Jilsing, Michael Jilsing uh, alleged that uh, Durbin was abusing his law license by filing a frivolous lawsuit to run up legal fees for him, his family, and respondents, former neighbors, as a personal vendetta. Jelsing's sister, Christine Jelsing, has been involved in a bitter divorce with respondent uh, in Tulsa County. Oh boy. In support of his grievance, Jelsing provided a text messages in which respondent exchanged with a friend in July 8, 2016, as follows. Oh, no. Responded, this woman gets my child out of state on agreement that we work together and handle this like, like adults. Then she pulls this effing, effing crap. Friend, so now it's going to be World War Three, right? Yes. Blank her blank ass. Her mom is going to have to open up her wallet big time for this. Her brother, but you damn, you damn sure better effing believe it, is going to be footing one hell of an expensive bill. You're free. Yes, I effing am. Oh boy. Included a text, uh, Jelsey including a text message respondent sent to his wa former wife about the cranes where he threatened to sue them for intentional interference with contractual relations and intentional infliction of emotional, dis uh, emotional distress. Respondent texted, quote, hell, I will make up some sh <laughs> No! Please. They will regret the having day they got involved in this. No. Oh. <laughs> Why would you put that on paper? <laughs> no. <sighs> oh no. Uh the divorce was granted on in 2017 with the parties being awarded joint custody. They continue to litigate issues involving visitation, child support, alimony, custody. Uh, respondent threatened to take uh, the ex-wife back to court and seek full custody anytime she did something with, with which respondent disagreed. Respondent repeatedly threatened uh, the ex-wife that she did not want to go to court against him because he, being an attorney, could ruin her financially. 
Uh, in October 2019, he filed for emergency custody. In November, he filed a lawsuit in Tulsa uh, against his ex-wife, um, his uh, former mother-in-law, uh, the Cranes, um, his brother-in-law, and his former sister-in-law. Man, he's going after everybody. He alleged in part that the defendants acted in, con in concert to further the illegal and tortious objectives of the ex-wife and engaged in a pattern a uh, pattern of conduct whereby they engage in a pattern of surveillance of plaintiff. Uh, the defendant's conspiracy caused them severe emotional distress and harm. Uh, some of the respondents' allegations in the lawsuit against the ex-wife were salacious and designed to embarrass and harass her. He also alleged his ex-wife lied about her mother being ill to guess re respondents would agree to allow her and their child to move to North Dakota, then Minnesota, in order to care for their mother. Wait... <laughs> Respondent alleged his former, uh, the ex-wife breached their agreement to facilitate visitation. Yada, yada, yada. More and more about what he did. Uh, Respondent further alleged that the cranes uh, trespassed onto his property. Um, he alleged this, uh, he falsely alleged that the, they trespassed and they alleged that this occurred during a period where the couple was separated. Um, alleged that they followed the movements of plaintiff and conducted service on the residents. Include libel, slander, uh, his lawsuit include allegations of libel, slander, negligence, gross negligence, negli negligence per se, I I I I E D, civil conspiracy, trespassing, and fraud, uh, special damages uh, of excess of seventy five thousand dollars. That's to give it um, federal jurisdiction. Um, on December twenty third, they filed the, uh, the ex wife and the family filed a motion to dismiss. On January 2020, the Cranes, the neighbors, filed an, uh, an application to set hearing pursuant to the Oklahoma Citizens Participation Act, OCPA. Um, note, guys, for, note, for the, note for this. The OCPA is Oklahoma's anti-slap um, anti statute. Um, that's what it's called there. And he, Durbin is actually, and Dur one of Durbin's primary defenses against this bar about this bar complaint is the anti slap um, statute. Uh, thanks, uh, Trogdor. For the $5. Um, on February 20th, uh, on Feb oh no, um, they filed, and it was granted to uh, February 18th, 2020, and then rescheduled for February 26th. Um, on February 26th, all parties appeared at the scheduled hearing on the motion to dismiss. Respondent was not prepared, resulting in the court continuing the hearing and consolidating hearings on all pending motions. On or about, oh no. On or about March 20th, 2020, during a meeting to discuss custody issues, respondent told uh, the ex-wife that with regard to the civil lawsuit against her, her family, and the Cranes, quote, I know those lawyers are going to be charging the shit out of you when they start hitting you with a lot of that stuff. I'd rather not run you through that if I don't have to. Look, there's a reason why I named the Cranes, too. F those people. I like to cost them thirty to $40,000, too. I mean, so they can spend $44,000 fighting me at a minimum. And, if that, and that's if they're lucky, they're gonna only going to spend that much. So this goes to trial, you're looking at... Dude, you're... You... <laughs> it's like... It's practically blackmail, or not blackmail, it's like extortion. <laughs> you're, you're saying the quiet part out loud, man. You're basically admitting that you're doing this purely to uh, run up the costs and not based on any merit. What the fuck? Oh, man. No. It, it's, 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 it's damning. This statement, uh, again, assuming it's true, this statement is damning evidence towards the idea 
that he only filed these uh these lawsuits were filed um frivolously that he knew that they were bunk and that the only reason why he filed them was to try uh, was to try and um what he said financially ruin them with uh, legal fees on may 6 the judge granted the motion to dismiss in part On June 9th, the hearing was held. The respondent provided no additional witnesses or evidence supporting these allegations, despite the continuance from February 26, 2020. And per the Cranes, made the hearing virtually unnecessary. The court dismissed the libel and slander causes of action against the Cranes and ordered that the request... Oh, no. And ordered that the request for sanctions and attorney's fees against respondent were to be considered at the conclusion of the case. The court also dismissed the fraud claim. The Cranes uh, filed their answer to the amended petition to file the counterclaim and malicious prosecution. They argued that the June 9, 2020 hearing respondent could not provide facts or circumstances that a reasonable person would believe justified a claim of slander. They also alleged that the primary purpose of including the Cranes in this petition was in to inflict in financial stress upon them by incurring legal fees defending his action based on the respondent having made both written and oral statements indicating this intent. The Cranes also alleged an abuse of process. Uh, based on respondents' bad intention in seeking the continuance of the hearing, his delay in requesting discovery, and his attempts to drag out the litigation for the sole purpose of inflicting financial stress upon them. They requested actual and punitive damages. On June 10th, oh no, on June 10th, he filed a dismissal without prejudice of Richard Crane, Priscilla Jelsing, and Cindy Jelsing. On June 11th, the respondent filed an amended dismissal without prejudice of Richard Crane, Priscilla Jelsing, and Cindy Jelsing. On June 22nd, they filed their answer as well in malicious prosecution. That basically the same thing. This is just uh, this is this uh, lawsuit was done um, without justification. It was vexatious. Yada yada yada. Hold on, let me see here. Based on their counterclaims of malicious prosecution and abuse of process, uh, the Durbin sought judgment against respondent for the actual damages as well as punitive damages. Oh. On June, so on June 30th, respondent moved to dismiss his claims. On July 15th, respondent moved to dismiss his other counter, uh, the counterclaims. Oh, the counterclaims, just to say. On August 6th, Judge Sellers entered an order on motion to dismiss and denied respondents' motion to dismiss the counterclaims pursued the Rule 4H. On August 7th, respondent moved to strike the motion for sanctions against him. On August 18th, they, uh, they filed an application for fees, costs, and expenses pursuant to Oklahoma uh, under the anti-slap statute. Requesting an approval of $8,478 in uh, fees and costs of $295. Um, the court denied um, Durbin's motion to dismiss the counterclaims. Uh, on September 23rd, the judge uh, deferred the application for fees and costs. Oh my god. And then uh, Judge Seller's order specified that the court specifically retains jurisdiction over this motion, even should the case be voluntarily dismissed. Because you know, you know that if the writing is on the wall, he would, uh, Durbin would, would absolutely try to voluntarily dismiss the matter um, to try and get out of paying anything. Litigation and substantive activities thereafter ceased on or about the summer 2021. During mediation in his divorce case, respondent offered to drop the remaining civil suit against the Jelsings in an attempt to gain leverage over visitation issues. Um, on or about uh, 20 October, he told the ex-wife that he would not cooperate with anything to do with visitation unless Michael Jelsing dropped the bar complaint against him.
On March 2020, uh, 1st, 2021, the OBA received, finally received his response to the uh, bar grievance, saying that they were attempt to protect and ensure the health, welfare, and safety of my daughter. Uh, yeah, da, 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 da. ex-wife, um, women bad, ex-wife's family bad, they're being mean. He admitted in his response to, to, uh, to his response to repeatedly threatening court action. Um, did not uh, he did not address the allegation that the civil suit was filed with, uh, maliciously with the intent to file, cause financial harm. Uh-oh. During OBA's investigation of this grievance, it obtained a copy of a text message from Durbin to his ex-wife that was sent in 2017. The message was in reference to the Cranes filing a complaint with the city over the respondent parking in a boat in his driveway. Respondent texted, Do you still talk to Leanne, who is a member of the Cranes? They have apparently bitched to the city about the boat in the driveway. I got a letter from the city. I'm going to have to sue them for something to teach them the lesson to stop messing with me. You may want to advise them that I don't play around and what's free for me to do What's free for me to do will cost them tens of thousands if they keep fucking with me. I may not win, but it won't cost me anything to try. And I'm not being negative or mean towards you. I know you, uh, I know you know them and they need to leave me alone or learn a lesson. I'd be happier with the first, but don't mind doing the second as I think they deserve the lesson. Stop! <laughs> Stop, man. Bro. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're, <laughs> You're br bro, it's why though? <laughs> At the time he filed his, uh, Jelsey filed his grievance against the respondent. The family had incurred $30,000 in, in legal fees. As of the date of this filing, there are no hearings scheduled in the federal case. The remaining causes of action against him, uh, as well as the counterclaims against the, against the respondent remain pending. The current attorney for the Cranes advised that the OBA that it repeated attempts to communicate with the respondent, who is now pro se, to discuss possible resolution of the remaining causes of action have been unsuccessful. So he's just he's just letting this lawsuit hang. And I was saying this conduct violates 1.1, 3.1, 3.3, 4.4, 8.4, A, C, D, and rule uh, of the rules of professional conduct and rule 1.3 are uh, the rules, go uh, go rules governing disciplinary um, proceedings. Uh, oh, oh, so this is about a, oh, so this is actually about an audit. Uh-oh. The Holmes and Williams grievances. This is about the, the audit now. Tulsa County District Court Local Rules 11.1b and 11.3 prohibit the use of cameras, television, or other recording broadcasting equipment in the immediate vicinity of a courtroom, including the hallways, to ensure courtroom proceedings are conducted at all times with a dignity and manner calculated to avoid disruption and order of decorum. Uh, uh, which the judicial process demands. On November 22nd, 2022, Morgan William Williams and a court deputy approached two news reporters who were conducting an interview with him uh, in the hallway between um, 501 and 506 at the courthouse. Williams, who's a bailiff uh, for Judge uh, Sharon Jones, or excuse me, J Sharon, uh, Judge Sharon Holmes, advised the reporters that there is a specifically designated area of the courthouse where media permitted to conduct interviews. So it's not to distract or interrupt courts. Maybe it's, oh, wait, I think there's actually, okay, so this one, I think we might have video of this. We might have video of this, guys. I think it's this. Hold on. Durbin. Is I'm it? hoping you're talking. Is this, is this it? Hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check here. We, I think this is it. So let's uh, put this up front. I can, I can hold 
you, I, you can, ma'am, I'm not talking to you, Judge. I'm talking, I'm talking to you, Judge. But you don't get to talk to my bailiff like that. She can't like talk to me, Judge. You don't get to talk to hey, my bailiff like that. I, I don't need to talk to you, Judge. No, you don't. Because you're going to have a problem with me, Judge Sharon Kay. I, I know who you are, Judge. I know who you are. Okay, this is the incident. Tulsa County, they filed a, uh, a, a grievance against Attorney Durbin after this incident in November 22nd, 2022. So this is the grievance. This is it. Respondent began yelling at Will, uh, Williams, demanding to know where this policy was and what the policy was. They advised that he could get a copy of the rule from the court administrator, but he continued to demand information on the policy in a loud voice. Uh, Williams repeated that respondent could get a, a copy of the policy there, um, and she told, uh, and when respondent continued to act belligerently, she told him she could have her judge tell, have her judge tell him the media policy. Respondent yelled, go get your judge. Jesus. Williams went to the courtroom and advised Judge Holmes of the situation. When Judge Holmes came out to the hallway where William respondent and the media congregated, um, respondent pulled out his cell phone and told him that he was oh, being reported. No. Didn't, didn't, why don't you go drink some more at the bar, Judge? You do all that a lot. Go be a drunk, Judge. Oh, boy. Oh, that's right. I'm over here talking. You, you can, ma'am, I'm not talking to you, Judge. I'm talking, I'm talking to you, though. Talking to you, judge. But you don't get to talk to my bailiff she can't like that. To me, judge. You don't get to talk to hey, my judge. bailiff like I, I, that. I don't need to talk to you, Judge. No, you don't. Because you're going to have a problem with me. Judge Sharon Kay. I, I know who you are, Judge. Thank you. I know who you are. I'm going to file a judicial complaint. No. Didn't, didn't. Why don't you go drink some more at the bar, Judge? You do all that a lot. No. Go be a drunk, Judge. So, uh, so the, the reference to the drunk thing is apparently he's alleging that the judge, uh, he's, this, he made it, he's made repeated allegations against this particular judge that she allegedly, um, was stopped with a DUI for drink, uh, uh for a DUI, uh, where she and her grandson were drinking or were drunk or something. And that allegedly that she got out of the DUI. I haven't looked deep into that but that's something that he's held on to and so that's um has he's been alleging that against the against the judge and you're oh the bailiff bailed her out of, okay yeah well we know how they treat first amendment in the courthouse don't we the mob squad. Cringe. It's gonna be fun on the news tonight, y'all. So apparently, according to this, respondent was so loud that the uh, judge pretty had to stop a proceeding in her courtroom. Um, judge. Uh, Drummond ha apparently had to stop a proceeding um, in his uh, courtroom. Apparently, like three different judges had to stop uh, their hearings or stop what they were doing. Or either their hearings or stop what they were doing to go figure out what the hell is going on outside, uh, outside in the hallway. I don't think y'all fit in the elevator. Y'all are a little fat today. You want to stay here? I don't want to be crowded or touched by y'all. Who's Caldwell? Oh, respondents' actions were recorded by Elizabeth Caldwell, a news reporter and director. She tweeted from her Twitter account uh, the following, the attorney for Grant Miller in the city council voted case. There have been told officers in the courthouse to fuck off and that they were too fat to chase him, at, uh, chase him after an employee said, I couldn't interview Miller's team in front of the courtroom. He also said he also fought with the judge. In a subsequent tweet that same day, she posted a photograph of the respondent filming sheriff's deputies during a confrontation and commented, it is interesting that Miller says he'll donate 50% of his city council income to uh, TPD. I don't know what TPD is. 
but his attorney is literally telling law enforcement to fuck off. Respondents' public statements about Judge Holmes were known to be false and were made with a reckless disregard to the truth or falsity concerning the qualifications or integrity of a judge. Uh, the comments about the Judge Holmes served to undermine the public confidence in the administration of judge justice. Then they received grievances from Judge Holmes and Williams regarding his conduct on, um, on uh, November 22nd, 2022. Uh, and then, he, yeah. All right, then. The Burke Grievance. On or about November 11, 2022, Attorney Taylor Burke and his law firm filed an election irregularity petition and the election board on behalf of, uh, uh, this is involving a city council, involving a city council candidate. A respondent then made a series of meritless and potentially defamatory accusations. Against, I guess uh, Durbin was um, Durbin was uh, uh, representing the this attorney's um, opponent in this election. Um, respondent made a series of meritless and defamatory accusations against Burke during the press conference. <clears throat> Uh, this involved an election challenge. Above, refused to cooperate. And... <laughs> so uh, they had scheduled this hearing on the uh, on this election petition or this recount petition. And they say, Jesus. Um, Respondent stated, in part, Mr. Burke, as I've explained repeatedly, I'm out of town. I'm back on Monday and happy to interview witnesses. Then, if you do not drop this matter beforehand, also several times it's been mentioned that other attorneys could fill in for me. I want to make clear that the female attorneys in my office will have nothing to do with you, Mr. Burke. They find you as detestable as I do. Goodness. Hey, I see you, unclean hands. What's up, man? Burke re replied that same day to a respondent's email saying, Mr. Durbin, let's be clear. You will agree that the other attorneys in your office can attend the interview, so I'm not present. If so, we can schedule them um, with Mr. Canfield and Ms. Cash right away. I assume you will not really agree to that, but just in case, let me know. Your other statements are unnecessary. The personal attacks will stop. So I, so I want to let you guys know that, um, yes, it is actually um, a, a no-no under the RPC to, to make, like, disparaging personal attacks um, to opposing counsel, uh, what be it in a correspondence or publicly. Like, you're supposed to act in a professional manner uh, as an attorney. Yeah. Uh, so just, I know, shocker. Uh, it's shocker, but yes. Uh, there's, there's supposed to be at least a, a modicum of professional decorum um, for the profession. <sighs> On November 17th, 2022, when the hearing began at the scheduled time, respondent appeared to have difficulty connecting remotely. Um, Hicks was present on behalf of Miller uh, and was able to proceed. At approximately an hour into the, court, the hearing, the court took a recess and when it resumed, a written motion seeking Judge Drummond's disqualification had been submitted by respondent. The judge denied that motion. The hearing continued. Later that day, after a long recess, Durbin was able to connect to online and again uh, sought the court's disqualification. Uh, Judge Drummond, again, denied the motion. On November 18, 22, an attorney for Burke, uh, who was opposing counsel, sent Durbin a letter demanding the cease and desist for making false and defamatory public statements against Burke and his ability to practice law. Uh, they cited to the press conference as well as his public posts on the Facebook page.
Um. Oh boy. He uh, on November twenty second, uh, Burke and another and a, another attorney from his firm were waiting with their client for an elevator at the courthouse. An elevator opened with a respondent and other people on it. Despite the, uh, due to the uh, fact that the hearing was scheduled to begin in a few minutes, Burke, Cash, and Arthur Arthurell got into the elevator. Despite the cease and desist letter, respondent immediately began berating Cash and Burke, calling them and their arguments stupid and f***ing stupid. <laughs> Burke asked respondent several times to stop and refers to the cease and desist letter. Uh, and, but respondent said that he could say whatever the hell he wa he say whatever he wanted and that they should not have gotten on the elevator. Special Judge Teresa Drelling was on the elevator and heard the respondent's comments. So after the hearing, oh, so after the hearing, that, oh, so that, this was the precursor to the video that we just saw. After the hearing, Burke was approached by reporters in the hallway outside and began answering the questions. Judge Holmes bailiff came out and asked them to move the interview to his designated area. Um, Burke and the reporters moved at his request and finished the interview. As Burke and Arthur were taking the stairs to leave the courthouse, they heard respondent give his bar under for someone in an agitated tone, and they left the things before and they left before things escalated. Uh, the matter outside the courtroom escalated as set forth in paragraphs 101 to 110. So this was this Cash said that he, uh, so Cash uh, observed the Judge Pretty having to stop her proceeding and figure out what the hell is going on. Um, and then on December 8th, the OBA received another grievance from Burke regarding his behavior during his representation of Miller in the election issue. Burke alleged this was not the first time. Uh, Durbin unfairly sought a course disqualification and cited respondents' actions in the state of McCutcheon. Burke advised in the McCutcheon matter, respondents' client was sanctioned $25,000 for refusing to produce evidence for many years that during the hearing before the district judge respondent made a series of disrespectful and demeaning statements to him in the court <laughs> Burke advised that judge glasgow ultimately recused from the matter oh my goodness so this guy has a history he has an obvious history of like like what what is with these guys and a, an utter lack of like self control i, I don't <laughs> It's like not just him, but to uh, Chili and this guy. They just have zero self control. Again, this is more about the um, incident um, regarding Judge Holmes, the Mattingly grievance. Um, Medical marijuana authority. Okay, so they Oklahoma's medical marijuana, not um, full legalization. These are for vendors. Um, apparently, he has an issue with what the hell is metric? Uh, a state solicited proposals for multiple vendors for a seed to sale tracking system, and on September 18, 2020, signed a contract with Metric LLC. Uh, so he apparently this guy the Durbin really does not like OMMA and metric. He even filed a um, lawsuit against them. We're gonna keep on going because uh, get this is getting out of this is getting. Moving forward. Moving forward, uh, oh, a Tyrant, there we go, uh, Tyrant, we got a Tyrant sighting. Oh my goodness. Nazi Germany reference. Uh, don't, uh, don't effing touch me, you put your f***ing hands on me, you motherfucking prick, you idiot. Oh my goodness. You just bought themselves a lawsuit. Section 1983. <sighs> on April 9, 2023, the Tulsa World article 
was published reporting on the respondents' burdensome Oprah uh, ORA request to the city of Tulsa and the lawsuit he filed against the city alleging violations of the Open Meetings Act. The news article reported that respondent made sure to live stream his visits to City Hall and other government, government offices in search of public records. The results have not always been to his liking. He made that clear. Sometimes lobbying insults and profanities as individuals he believes are sending in his way. So this is like him going full on auditor. And then these are also comments that he's made against the judiciary. Uh, he seems like he's like a really swell dude, a really swell dude. All right, I'm not gonna go through the rest of this, but you're, you're you're you've already seen like uh, the pattern here. Now the I well I do want to go to the amended complaint because they add more. There's more. All right, we're back at the tyrant. Let me see what we got here. So I think a lot of the ones that he's at, that we they've added are since they filed the uh, grievance against him, or uh, on or about the time that they filed the grievance against him back in August of 2023. Because they're now at, now we're at thir uh, 13. Yeah, this is September 1, 2023. And this is uh, grievance number four, uh, 14, uh, grievance number 15, the coal grievance. So rule 6.2A, verify complaint request for an order of emergency interim suspension. And then count 15, the coal grievance. Uh, Respondent was accompanied by two individuals with cameras, of course. <laughs> wait, does it, wait, is this video up, uh, up online? Let's check. This live stream? I'm over here talking. Wait, not this one. This is January of 2024. Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to my first ever live. No, this is February. Dave on YouTube. Uh, Hold on, let me get the let me put uh, put the pop out. Oh, oh he, he's doing he was doing the boomer stuff by going on Facebook Live and not YouTube. For watching the channel, we really appreciate when they tell me they're not gonna do anything about releasing my name, date of birth, social security number, et cetera. So that's another case that's going on. Charged by the same people who are running the conspiracy here at this courthouse. So anyway, we had to wait for Clint. I don't know where he went. Oh, I should... we gotta go upstairs and let me have those, let me have that. How do you flip this camera around? Sorry, y'all, y'all are watching me learn how to use this. Um, there it looks. Hey, look. Okay. Bro, oh, count 16. Continue to fall center of reckless attacks on the judiciary. Uh, is that the, uh, count eight? Now, <laughs> count 18. Grievance, <laughs> count 18. <laughs> 18 counts total against this guy. All right, so I'm gonna let's let's go to what he did. Oh, so apparently he also um he got arrested. I think Unclean Hands posted this too. All right. Thank you. A Tulsa attorney was arrested this morning on an assault charge. Attorney Rob Durbin live streamed his walk to the courthouse to face arrest. He held a news conference and when he tried to go into the courthouse, deputies arrested him. Durbin went to the ground and said he needed an ambulance. Deputies arrested Durbin for a misdemeanor warrant connected to a scuffle with a security guard inside of City Hall. Durbin was checked for injuries, then he was booked in. Now he claims that he was thrown to the ground. This looks like a goddamn soccer dive. Said he needed an ambulance. 
he he just he just bent his knees to, and went to the ground. He's arrested Durbin for a misdemeanor warrant connected to a scuffle with a security guard inside of. Oh my goodness. New at five, this is video we got this morning as Tulsa County deputies took Tulsa attorney Ronald Durbin into custody on a misdemeanor assault charge. He was headed into the courthouse to turn himself in, but when deputies said his supporters and media could not follow, he turned to leave, and that's when the arrest happened. He bonded out an hour later. Now, we first told you last night that a city hall security guard accused Durbin of assault. In the past few weeks, Tulsa's chief investigative reporter, Jana Clark, has been telling us about the legal drama between the city of Tulsa and this attorney. She joins us live now. Jana. Yeah, I went to the courthouse to hear what attorney Ronald Durbin had to say before he turned himself in. How the arrest went down caught everyone off guard. Oh, hey, boy, <laughs> how are you? Tulsa attorney Ronald Durbin greeted a small crowd of supporters and news media Wednesday morning. He talked about how he wants transparency in the city of Tulsa. All of this started with a quest for open and transparent government. He even announced he's running for mayor. I am throwing my hat into the ring for mayor of the city of Tulsa. Oh, so he's pulling a chili. <sighs> yeah. <clears throat> All right. Durbin had planned this press conference and planned to turn himself in right after he talked. It's all over this. The affidavit says there's a warrant for Durbin for. Uh, CT, thank you for the five dollars. Do we know his real workload? Could we be flaming out? Maybe no real business. I, I honestly don't know, CT. I really don't. Um, I, I couldn't tell you whether this is. This is a, a genuine like crusade he's doing, whether this is just him like not being able to control his temper or whether this is just um, a facade for to try and gain new new clientele. I really don't know. For assault and battery that happened at the end of March, it says a city hall security guard says Durbin punched him with his fist in the center of his chest. So we're going to walk in here. Here's the video of what happened. Durbin uh -oh. was at City Hall asking about open records. He recorded this video and posted it on Facebook about five months ago. Durbin says the guard Ooh. put his hands on him. He recorded this video and posted it on Facebook about five months ago. Durbin says, Oh, right there, right there. Oh, no. This video and posted it on Facebook about five months ago. Durbin says the guard put his hands on him first. Did you punch the security guard? No, I pushed him off of me twice. Then after the press conference, Durbin said he was turning himself in and headed to jail. So I'm going to go get myself arrested. But here's what happened when Durbin and all of us got to the courthouse door. They only wanted to let him inside, even though it's a public building. Mr. Durbin can go. Everybody else will stay out. Can't go in? Why can't they? I'll stay out here. Durbin. I'll stay out here then. He he took a dive. Come on, man! You got to make it more believable than that. Random metal. Thank you for the five dollars. I have to ask on behalf of Florida man. Does this mean Tulsa man is the new Florida man? The five bucks for the kitty treats. Thank you very much, Rando. Uh, maybe, probably doubt it though. There's, we need a lot more Tulsa men or Oklahoma men um, than just this guy. Within 30 seconds, are the, are, are, were the other auditors screaming about his medical conditions? Were they were they giving him his bingo box on his behalf? Hang on, did you guys hear that? Hang on. Is 
he has heart issues. Yeah, he has heart issues. Within 30 seconds, Durbin asked for medical help. I need an ambulance. You Oh my God, he's screaming bloody murder. Unbelievable, unbelievable. He was peacefully walking in. Courtney Young came to support Durbin and says she never expected the arrest to go down like that. My heart stopped. I was panicking, like, but I was being pushed Why? back by the other officers. So, I mean, it was, it all happened so quick. It's crazy. What do you think about the arrest in general? It's so out of line. It's such a convenience thing with what's going on with him and everything with the city and with the judge. It's just, it's way too coincidental. What she's talking about has to do with a Fox 23 investigation we aired Monday. It's the background of all of this and why Durbin says this arrest is all about trying to, quote, shut him up. I'll have that for you tonight at 630. Covering news that matters, Jana Clark, Fox 23 News. After reviewing surveillance video of that arrest, TCSO is standing by the... I think they did too. Ah! Okay, this is part two of this uh, part two of the story. New details about the arrest of a Tulsa attorney today. We told you at five, deputies arrested Ronald Durbin in front of the Tulsa County Courthouse. He had planned to turn himself in, but when cameras were not allowed in with him, he turned back around. Tulsa's investigative reporter, Jana Clark, joins us now to unpack this complicated story that also has to do with stories she's done in the past couple of weeks. Jana. Ronald Durbin had a warrant for his arrest for assault and battery. And here's video of what happened when he went to City Hall about open records. The security guard says Durbin punched him. Durbin says the guard put hands on him first. Durbin thinks the arrest is to, is to quote, shut him up. Tulsa County deputies arrested attorney Ronald Durbin in front of the courthouse Wednesday morning. Why did they do this? Then Durbin asked for <laughs> medical help and went to the hospital. Yeah, he, uh, so my understanding, he was medically cleared uh, and like bonded out like an hour later. Before that, he held a press conference and talked about what happened between him and the security guard. I push him off once, he comes back towards me. I push him off a second time. He takes a step back. I engage no further. I got the man off of me, but he put his hands on me without any justification, without any legal right to do so. Durbin thinks the arrest warrant is nothing but a ploy. They want to see me go to jail. They want to see me go to jail because they're trying to hide things. What do you think about the timing of the arrest? Well, I mean, it's the day after you ran a story on Fox 23. He's talking about Fox 23 investigation. He filed a lawsuit against three city councilors. The suit says they were texting about city business during a public meeting. Councilors should not be talking in meetings, and if they got something to say, they should vocalize it so everybody can hear it. That case took a turn after Durbin confronted the Tulsa County judge who's over the case, Tracy Pretty. He said she deleted and changed court minutes. So this is my Rule 15 request that you recuse from this matter. Now the Oklahoma Supreme Court is set to hear that issue. Once a court record is put into the system, it should not be alterable. I also brought you this Fox 23 investigation. Durbin sued the city of Tulsa and Mayor G.T. Bynum a few days before the Improve Our Tulsa vote. The lawsuit says Bynum called for small group meetings with city councilors outside of public meetings. All for the purposes of avoiding the Oklahoma Open Meetings Act. That's a serial meeting. It's a series of meetings designed to not talk about the stuff during the public city council meetings. I tried to ask the mayor, the judge, and the three city councilors about this. They all said they're not allowed to talk about pending litigation. The Oklahoma Bar Association filed this 69-page complaint against Dur nice Durbin last Friday. It says in a 2020 case, Durbin conducted himself in a hostile, unprofessional behavior. And in a 2015 case, a client confronted him about his lack of communication. It says in a 2021 case, Durbin filed a frivolous lawsuit to run up legal fees. I call the timing of this just about perfect in terms of them trying to discredit me. They've been getting hit with all this stuff and they got to try to find something. After the arrest, Durbin went to the hospital. He left the hospital in the afternoon and he went to jail. He bonded out one hour later. Covering news that matters, Jana Clark. 
why don't they just disbar him? Why are they submitting complaints? Well, because that's because he has, contrary to what he thinks is happening, he is entitled to due process. Um, when they fi- uh, when when somebody files a complaint against him or files a grievance against him, he thinks that he's getting shafted, but he's not. And I'll, and and we'll and we could go that we're gonna go and we're gonna go talk about that right now. Um, because I think that's the that's the more egregious issues that I have with this guy on what he's saying to his audience versus what's in the docket. So, where is his thingamabob? Ah. Uh, happy to see you. Welcome to the... All right, so this, uh, this uh, is his live stream. On the day that he received the, his notice that he has been... Um, that the, uh, uh, the Bar Association's uh, or, uh, motion for an interim suspension. Remember, interim is like, is like a, 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 interim is basically, it's you're, you're, you're suspended pending the, the, the actual conclusion of the, the complaint filed against them. They can be uh, granted or denied as you, as you, as you will. The live today, coming to you live from the studios of Gorilla Publishing. Uh, thank you so much. If you're watching me on Facebook and you're wondering why isn't he looking at me, it's because I'm looking at the YouTube people and I'm looking at my screen in front of me so I can see the comments from the YouTube people. So if you're watching me from Facebook, get on over there to Gorilla Publishing. That's G U E R R I L L A Publishing. And yesterday, uh, get us an app because I got suspended. To, well, yesterday I got suspended. Yesterday. Uh, yesterday. Have you, have you seen it? I just got done doing uh, some interviews. This is, um, uh, he was suspended on April 8th. Right? Yeah, April 8th, uh, so about, so about a week ago. Uh, well, a little more than a week ago. Interviews, uh, with, uh, some news stations, uh, because they're interested in this. Now, the Tulsa World's interested in it because they're a leftist hack of an organization, and I'm sure that their article... Uh, will be very supportive of the Oklahoma Supreme Court. But, folks, I was suspended yesterday by the Oklahoma Supreme Court without a trial, without... We're not at the... So here's the problem number one. We're not at the trial level yet. Again, this is an interim suspension. Interim. It can be reversed. It can be reversed pending the conclusion of the complaint. Calling any witnesses. We're not, we're not there yet. Again, we're not there yet for witnesses. That's in the future. In the future, he will have the uh, uh, he will have the ability to bring in witnesses without giving me any kind of hearing whatsoever. He did. Uh, they were going to rule. They, they he is going to get a hearing. He will get a hearing without allowing me to challenge any of the allegations against me with a motion to dismiss. I was entitled. You okay? So here's the big here's the big problem. He filed a motion to dismiss on, uh, okay, remember, uh, timelines, guys. The complaint was filed on, in August 11th, 2023. He filed his answer. Hold on. Oh, oh, oh. No, wait. Was it, what? Oh, I got to get the dates right. I want to make sure the dates are right. Okay, yeah. So they uh, filed the uh, on August 11, 2023. He filed his answer the same day, August 11th. He then files a motion to dismiss on September 6, 2023. Um, and, th- and in this motion to dismiss, he cites uh, Oklahoma's anti-slap lawsuit, anti-slap lit- uh, legislation, effectively saying that this grievance, this the only reason why this complaint's filed is to stifle his uh, protected speech. That's effectively what he's arguing here. 
The problem is that under the rules governing discipline for attorneys, attorney complaints, he is not allowed to file a motion to dismiss. Under rule 6.4, response to the complaint. The respondent shall, within 20 days after the mailing of the complaint, file a ma the after the mailing of the complaint, file an answer with the chief justice. The respondent may not challenge the complaint by demur or motion. In the event respondent fails to answer, the charges shall be ad deemed admitted, except that evidence shall be submitted for the purposes of determining the discipline to be imposed. He filed his answer, which is what he's allowed to, allowed to do. He filed the answer on the same day, but then he filed a motion to dismiss. The Bar Association filed um, a response to the motion to dismiss, saying that he, he's not allowed to do this um, under the rules. They filed that in September 19, 2023. One, saying that uh, uh, he, can't, he can't file this motion. And second, even if, um, even if the, uh, the, the anti-slap uh, uh, anti statute applied to attorney disciplinary proceedings, the, the motion to dismiss should nevertheless be denied because what they're arguing here is that all of these grievances go directly to his actions, as, uh, his conduct as an attorney, and not simply um, his speech. Because bear in mind, and they cite to it, the, there's a lot of RPC rules that do restrict an attorney's um, speech. For example, ex parte communications, um, disparaging, regard, uh, disparaging remarks in public against, uh, uh, against opposing counsel or, uh, or, or, their, uh, or the court. Like, there's a lot of rules in there in place for that. The, so the, the, his him trying to cite the First Amendment is just as ha ha ha, ha that doesn't work here. Anyway, ultimately, they denied his motion to dismiss uh, in October 2023 by virtue of saying he can't do it. Uh, he, he by virtue of saying the rules state that he can't file a motion to dismiss under the rules. Uh, and, and, yeah. Alexander, thank you for the $2. Think we one day see this kind of VB vid? Maybe. Possibly. Uh, I, feel, I feel like auditing, like, I feel like auditing is one of those gateway drugs into sovereign citizen, uh, sovereign citizenry, so it's possible. <clears throat> I don't do nothing. They were entitled, the Oklahoma Bar Association was entitled to make whatever salacious arguments they wanted about me. And the Oklahoma Supreme Court no trouble. You were given, they gave, bear in mind, they gave him the opportunity, which he took. They gave him the opportunity to respond to the Bar Association's um, interim suspension, uh, request for an interim suspension. And he responded. So he was given a chance to respond to the Bar Association's desire for an interim suspension. And he took it. He didn't like, but he, but he's claiming that he was never going to have given a chance to, to fight against it. He was. And you could see it from the docket. That is, again, this is public information. Every single filing in this case is available for you to download and see for yourself. I have, uh, and as a matter of fact, I think I posted a link to it. Uh, I posted a link to it um, in my Discord. It is, uh, uh, there's a link to the case uh, docket on my Discord right now. File. No hearing, no witnesses, no review of the videos that they're talking about suspends me without due process. Again, all of this will be, all of this he will get the chance to later on. Why? Because I run my mouth too much and they don't like it. This is the same Oklahoma Supreme Court who oh boy. after Roe versus Wade was overturned. Next, he tries to make a claim against the Supreme Court, saying they're a bunch of liberals because they upheld um, abortion rights after Roe v. Wade. It's not really relevant here. Again, he's poisoning the well simply by virtue of saying that the Supreme Court, the bars is issue, and they're all biased against him. Yada, yada, yada. They found that a woman, 
because of a right to prioritize my First Amendment rights to free speech because they don't like the content of my speech. Well, folks, I went to college and studied civil rights. It's what my undergraduate historical studies were in, was civil rights. Uh, I studied English as well, and I studied African American uh, literature. I I've always been interested in civil rights and the fight for justice and equality and equal protection and all of those things. And four years ago, February 3rd, 2020, I had the first of many heart attacks. And darn sure tried to kill myself with that one by flying on a plane after having a bunch of them. And in that recuperation, I made the decision that I was going to continue my career fighting for what was right and what I believed in and expressing my opinions, be damned what the Oklahoma Bar Association has to say about it because they, in all of my 15 years of legal experience, never having been in trouble, not once, have seen a lot of corruption. Well, I Bear in mind, again, uh, he says he never got in trouble, but the he he's had bar grievances filed against him since 2020. I made the decision to do something about it. And four years ago, I made the decision after a conversation with my wife, uh, who's a doctor, I, I'm fortunate, that... Wait, current wife or ex-wife? I was going to risk my license fighting against this tyrannical bureaucracy that is Oklahoma. And we've seen the Oklahoma Medical Marijuana Authority just demolish good business owners. We've seen the Oklahoma Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs do everything that they can do to, to squeeze Oklahoma business owners and drive them out and ruin their livelihoods. We've seen it across the board, and I have fought back at every opportunity I have had, and I don't regret one fucking iota of it. No one. Could I have done some things better? Sure. I can always do something better. I'm a human. I'm not perfect. I should, you should always reevaluate a situation and decide whether or not it could have been done better. That's one of the reasons why you don't see me curse nearly as much is because I think that I did give them some ammunition I didn't need to give them. But the fact remains that when I swore an oath to the Oklahoma Bar based upon uh, Based upon the alleged statements you've made in the, in the complaint, you swear a lot, my friend. Association, I did not agree to give up my First Amendment rights. Didn't make that deal. And four years ago, I said, when I started this attack on the Oklahoma Bar Association, that I knew what I was risking. And it's funny because there's some haters out there and they're like, oh, you got suspended. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Like they're in favor of this government suppressing your rights to free speech and my ability to go fight for all these businesses and people that I have fought for for free over the last six years. That's funny to me that those are the same people that I say that they're for all this equal protection and values that the government should be in our lives and cannabis should be legalized and all these other things. And then they're like, oh, but it's great that they suspended him from practicing law because he said that they're corrupt and things like that. Well, no, the, again, you're making a straw man. The, the, the complaint isn't about you saying mean things about the Bar Association. So I've done some interviews and it was interesting. You always wonder what press is going to say. Uh, and I was just doing an interview with Channel 8 out of Tulsa and Bert, who I know really well, came over to interview me. And Bert's questions were all like, so the First Amendment doesn't exist? And I had to explain to him that in the state of Oklahoma, no. We have a left-wing liberal hack of a judiciary in the state of Oklahoma. The Oklahoma legislature right now is doing everything it can to reform the Judicial Nominating Committee and the Oklahoma Bar Association's involvement in it. Why? Because they're all liberal hacks. They belong in California, not in freaking Oklahoma. I have, a feel, I have a strong feeling that a lot of uh, conservative judges and a lot of right-leaning judges and attorneys would also find your conduct to be pretty abhorrent, too. I, I, don't, I don't understand him like thinking that this is a... This is a partisan thing, but I mean, that, that, that this goes to his narrative. This is the land, or supposed to be the land of the free, the home of the brave. For them, you can still murder babies, but don't say something negative about them or you're going to get in trouble. So I figured, since I, it's a big story, that I would come and share with you guys the order that suspended me. And you could get my reaction uh, and, and the tears uh, that, uh, that I've shed. And I, and, I, and I got an admission. There was a moment, briefly, yesterday, that I got sad. I remember it, I was standing by the, my bed, 
And for a minute, I thought about just getting in bed, laying down and crying. Because look, I worked my ass off for this degree. I put myself through college. I earned my way through college. I did speech and debate. I coached speech and debate at the University of Tulsa while I was in law school to earn my way through law school. I worked my butt off for this. I studied hard. I passed the bar exam on the first try. And I've been an attorney working my butt off and doing great things for clients for 15 years. And I've never been in trouble. I'm okay with this being why I'm in trouble. So let's read through this. And, and let's remember, no witness is called, no trials granted. They just took what the Oklahoma Bar Association said on paper. And let's um, we'll find out. We, we will find out that, as a matter of fact, today, today, uh, he went to a, uh, he attended a scheduling conference uh, regarding his complaint. <laughs> remember, for those of you following along out there, this is the same Oklahoma Bar Association who is not investigating Matt Stacy, an Oklahoma attorney who's charged with 32 felonies for fraudulently creating all of these medical marijuana businesses, sham ownership. So apparently this Matt Stacy guy has actually been, it has been or is being investigated for this conduct. The problem is, is that be, thanks to this guy's like antics, all of any legitimate issues result, uh, surrounding these other attorneys is overshadowed by your antics. Submitting false documents, etc. He's charged with 32 felonies, but he did it more than 500 times. And they're not even investigating him. And, and why do I know they're not investigating him? Because I turned him in, gave them everything that they needed to know, and they told me, we're not going to investigate him. Why did I decide to go after the Bar Association? Because at the time, they were investigating me and, and subjecting me to potential discipline because I told a woman that she was an idiot on my Facebook page and she was because she was running a state question 806 in the state of Oklahoma and she's an absolute mo moron, lunatic, nutty, batshit, crazy of a person. And I expressed that opinion and she filed a bar complaint and they were- Well, yeah, because, well, it's more than that. According to the grievance, you also um, uh, sent your viewers to file uh, false uh, reviews against your business. Um, on top of the disparaging remarks she made about her in public. Bear in mind also, you're not, I, I doubt you're, I, I doubt, I doubt you're going to tell your viewers that uh, when you were face to face with members of the, uh, members of the Bar Association, you walked back all of your bravado and meekly said, I am so sorry. I, 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 you guys know of any contacts or anger management? I, I knew it was wrong. I, I was just having a bad day. My ex-wife. Yeah. You're not going to tell them that you're going to, you're going to proclaim that you, uh, you were the alpha giga Chad who didn't give a flying fuck, um, about what they said and about what she said. Uh, and you're not going to tell them about how you, um, groveled to the Bar Association when you had to talk to them face to face. They're investigating me, but when I turn in Matt Stacy for all of his acts, they do nothing. When I come back to them after he's arrested and, and show them the news stories, they do nothing. When I send him an article by Politico that's breaking down all of the things that he and Logan Jones and Eric Brown have done across the state of Oklahoma, they do nothing. I filed bar complaints against Logan Jones and Eric Brown. They're charged with 11 felonies each. By the way, I've been convicted of no crimes. I'm charged with a couple of misdemeanors. Uh, assault and battery for when the security guard put his hands on me, resisting arrest for when they tackled me. And when you punched him? Me and knocked me down and disturbing the peace because they don't like the- You were not tackled. You, you literally did a soccer dive. You might use the word, the fuck word. Um, so that's what I'm you know, charged with. Not guilty of anything, but charged. But anyway, these guys are charged with all these things. The Bar Association won't even investigate. So why do I decide to go after the Bar Association? It's because I saw this absolute corruption and said, no, I don't have to stand for this. I've almost, hey, look, maybe I would have thought differently if I wasn't coming off of a heart attack or two or three, three. Maybe I wasn't in my right mind when I made the decision that I was willing to risk it all. But I've reaffirmed that every time that they've sent me another complaint. And I said, you're full of crap. You're full of crap. You're full of crap. What are they mad about me now? Well, what are the recent ones? And you're gonna, you're gonna hear some of this, but what are the recent things that I've done? Well. If you are on James Freeman's channel or Josh Abrams, we just went to the Oklahoma County District Attorney's Office and filmed. And they got scared. And apparently they called the police, not while we were there. After they let us into the building, let us in there voluntarily, buzzed us in, and we did nothing wrong. Find out if that of course. appearance here. 
Watch the video, folks. I did nothing wrong. I don't have anything to hide. Did I expose Judge Sharon Holmes in Tulsa for drinking and then getting in a car with her minor child grandson and driving while intoxicated? Yep. What is the Oklahoma Bar Association and the Judicial Committee doing about her? Nothing. Zippity freaking doodah. So you can drink and drive with kids, but don't go talking about those judges drinking and driving with kids if you're an attorney, because if you do, you're gonna get in trouble. Or an Oklahoma Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs officer is going to insult somebody for his smell. And I am going to defend that person and eviscerate Mark Woodward at the Oklahoma Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs verbally. Did I read him the riot act and call him every name that in good conscience I could think to call him? Absolutely guilty of all of that. I exercised my First Amendment rights to call him the scumbag. I, I, as far as I don't know, I don't know whether his allegation that the judge uh, uh, drove her grandson drunk uh, one night is true. I don't know. I don't know. Bag that he was acting like. I'm not going to say it's true. I'm not going to say it's untrue. I don't, I don't know. Can you post a link uh, in the comments? Uh, we'll post it. But I, I'm going to skip to the first page. I'll read you. The Oklahoma Bar Association filed a verified complaint pursuant to Rule 6 of the Rules Governing Disciplinary Proceedings. Let me explain to you what a verified complaint is. The Oklahoma Bar Association's general counsel, Gina Hendricks, signed this complaint saying that I, I believe all these things. And then she had one other person sign and say, yep, yeah, looks good to me. That's a verified complaint. That's what it is. That's it. No evidence attached. None of that stuff. Just two people signing off of it. Who's Gina Hendricks? She's the same general counsel of the Oklahoma Bar Association who refuses to investigate Logan Jones, Eric Brown, Matt Stacey, or any uh, Judge Kirk Glasgow for soliciting bribes, Judge Sharon Holmes for drunk driving and driving, you know, while intoxicated with a kid in the car. You know, they don't want to investigate Judge Tracy Pretty of Tulsa, 14th Judicial District, destroying court orders and amending them and violating the Open Records Act. They don't want to do any of that stuff. But again, just two people. Signed it. That's all it took. That due process? Anybody think that that's due process? It says, on March 3rd, 2024, complainant filed an amended complaint and verified application for an order for an emergent order of emergency interim suspension. So back in October, the Oklahoma Bar Association went, we were on track for a trial. The Oklahoma Bar Association goes to the Supreme Court and says, oh, we need to delay all this. We need more time to amend our complaint. Yeah, because they wanted to add in more grievances filed against you. And they give them all the time they want. So when they come back, they say, we don't want to give them a trial anymore. We want to suspend them now. I think the reason why they wanted to uh, file an interim suspension is based upon your latest grievances filed against you in the middle of your current complaint, the current complaint. They're saying that you are acting so out of pocket that an interim suspension is warranted. And so that's why they did it. <clears throat> so let's go back here. Wait, back in October. File response plan. And so on, so this is, he has the timeline wrong. In October, on October 2nd, they denied his motion to dismiss. On the 24th, they granted, uh, the, they, uh, the bar association uh, filed a motion to continue. What'd they say? Ah, yes. So in this, they want, they, okay, so he is right. In October 24th, they filed a motion to continue because they believe he's continuing to violate certain rules. Uh, and they're, uh, because they are, have us received and is currently investigated additional allegations of professional misconduct. So they want to file a motion for leave to attend, uh, leave to amend their complaint. The uh, judge granted the order on October 25th. And then on February 13th is where they filed the motion for leave to amend the complaint and the verified application for an order of emergency and interim suspension. And they do it. I get no trial, no hearings. They get all, they get everything that they ask for. I get nothing. Again, again, on uh, this was February 13th is where they filed this motion to, for leave to amend. And on February 15th, the judge um, filed an order to show cause 
to the respondent, him, saying why an order of interim suspension should not be entered. And then he filed for an extension of time to respond to that uh, on March 4th. And then on March 5th, They granted, uh, they granted on March 5th, they granted the motion to leave, uh, for leave to amend. And then, he also filed, and then he filed, he, um, on Mar oh, sorry, on March 4th, he filed his response to the motion, um, to the order to show cause. So he was given a chance to respond. In support, the OBA reports that it's received sufficient evidence demonstrating respondents has committed conduct in violation of some rules it lists. So, yeah, the Oklahoma Bar Association said I did some stuff that violates the rules. Yeah, we know that they've alleged that. That's why we get a trial, right? That's how that's supposed to work. And I'm in paragraph three. The complainant, and this is the Oklahoma Bar Association, is the complainant. So this is what the Supreme Court writes. This is the, this is the Oklahoma Supreme Court writing this garbage nonsense. And thank you, Oklahoma Supreme Court, for doing No, he didn't, he didn't, do he didn't miss. He didn't miss the, the time to respond. He did respond. To help me in the federal case I'm going to be filing in the next week or so. Because what you've written here really does me a favor because it firmly establishes that the punishment that has been imposed on me is for the exercise of my First Amendment rights to free speech and not doing is. anything wrong as a lawyer. So let's read. Uh, okay. Uh, again, I, he fully, I'm willing to bet you a lot of money that the only thing that he showed to his audience is the order granting the suspension, the interim suspension. He did not, uh, he did not provide them a copy or a link to the docket where they can see the complaint for themselves and see whether or not the Bar Association is only doing this purely because of his speech or whether or not there are actual allegations of misconduct by his, through his practice as an attorney. Quote, the complainant alleges it has conducted an extensive review of respondents' court filings, pleadings, and statements made in open court. These include matters wherein the respondent is representing himself and wherein he is acting as an attorney for third parties. Okay, great. So they reviewed all of my filings and things that I've made and things I've said in open court. Notice they don't say that I did anything wrong in any of those filings, in anything in open court that was on a record. Nothing. They say I nothing in this section. This is the only section that they didn't they wouldn't put that in there yet because that those determinations haven't been made. We're still in the middle of the... We're not, we're not there yet. About me doing anything as a lawyer, folks. I'm serious. This is the only section about me doing something as a lawyer. So, so listen. The complaint alleges it's conducted an extensive review of respondents' court filings, pleadings, and statements made in open court. Great. They've reviewed all that stuff. Doesn't say I've done anything wrong. Gosh darn it. All right. I mean, does this guy not understand what a preliminary injunction is? Back up. It's just... <sighs> All right, so showing it out here. I think we got it fixed, folks. Sorry. Yes, uh, Navy Girl. This guy's channel is uh, gorilla, as in like, uh, not not the animal, but the other kind of gorilla, the militant gorilla publishing. Sorry. Hey, look, we're 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 we can't even get on the Wi-Fi when we're trying to get on the Wi-Fi. We tried. We, we logged into Wi-Fi before we did this. Uh, so. All right, you can't internet, so we're gonna go uh, directly to part two. We're going to change the world. The information and didn't bother to make sure that it logged into the Wi-Fi. So we blame that one on Lee Thomas. So that one's hey, Lee Thomas's fault. Josh gave me the wrong password. Uh, I typed but, it in. But who could have made sure it connected to the Wi-Fi? Complainant, and again, this is the Oklahoma Bar Association, submits, respondent, that's me, continues to assert reckless, malicious, and dishonest statements in his, quote, Facebook Live, unquote, broadcast sessions that are posted online and publicly accessible. According to the OBA grievances, during these broadcasts, the respondent disparages judges, the judiciary, opposing counsel, the OBA, and anyone with opposing views. Well, first of all, they even know that it's the complainant submitting that this is what, they assert that I'm reckless and malicious and dishonest. They haven't proven that they're reckless. They haven't proven that they're malicious. Well, sometimes they are malicious and I do intend to hurt people. Um, that's a weird, weird admission to make, but all right. But dishonest, 
drunk Judge Holmes driving her eight-year-old grandkid? Judge Pretty destroying court records? Jessica Garvin, uh, Senator Garvin, has got a couple of opponents. Why? Because she's known for going around and being promiscuous, and you don't really do that very well in Oklahoma. Is that salacious? You got Adria Berry, who's an absolute piece of shit, as the head of the OMMA. You got Gina Hendricks and, and Lorraine Faribault at the Oklahoma Bar Association, who are failing to do their jobs going after criminals, who are failing to go after people charged with felonies who we have given... This is, this is his. By the way, the stuttering issues are all actually on his end, not mine. That's true. That's true. So why don't I have a right to defend myself? Again, they even know that that's what's alleged. Not that's what's proven. They submitted this. Great, and I submitted this bullshit. So, yeah. And again, this is the same general counsel that I'm seeking to recuse because when I told them that I was going to go public, and this is where it really all turned. I told the Oklahoma Bar Association, Gina Hendricks and Lorraine Farabo, that I was going to go public about their failure to investigate Logan Jones, Eric Brown, and Matt Stacy. And they told me that if I did that, I, as a lawyer, disclosing that confidential bar complaint. Uh, the injunction has to be based on some indicia of substance already vague and unspecific, unspecific allegations should not be sufficient. I agree with you, doctors, but based on the complaint that the uh, Bar Association filed, they are making specific uh, specific allegations. They are uh, citing specific statements that he's made. They're citing text messages that have been sent by him um, of his statements. They are citing his own Facebook uh, live streams um, that they have been provided copies of by uh, grievance filers. So uh, the allegations on the complaint are ba are very are specific. They're not just vague allegations of him being mean to other attorneys. Him saying. Um, disparaging comments uh to uh to the judge they are very specific with dates uh locations and um and specific statements that are being made would get in trouble and be subjected to discipline because i disclosed this bar complaint and it's supposed to be confidential but they also told me in another email that the woman that filed that ridiculous bar complaint against me for saying something about her on facebook the truth is a defense to slander and defamation allegations clearly Clearly, this was done in retail. What do you mean by clearly? On what basis cle do you say that's clearly? Computer doctors, again, I, I invite you to go to my Discord and t click the link that has the, do the full docket. And you can read the complaint itself. I, I invite you to go and read the Bar Association's complaint itself. And, and tell me whether or not this uh, uh, this complaint is based off of him, uh, his First Amendment speech. But she can say whatever she wants to say about the bar complaint she filed against me because she's not an attorney. So it, she doesn't have to keep it confidential, but I, as an attorney, have to. That's when I decided that the system was corrupt and I wasn't going to stand for that anymore. And we don't have, I, I don't work with what's you know good for you is good for you, but what's good for everybody else can only be good for everybody else. I, I don't believe in that system. I'm sorry. Rules for thee, but not for me doesn't work here, right? And that's the general principle that the Oklahoma Bar Association and the Oklahoma Supreme Court, they're interested in hiding corruption. They don't want me going out and asserting things and saying things and posting things online where I say and disparage judges, the judiciary opposing counsel. When they're corrupt, when they're stealing people's money, when they're doing things wrong, why aren't we saying something about it? Why am I not obligated as an attorney to disclose this wrongdoing? Oh wait, I am required to disclose wrongdoing. You are. Done that and they do not. And you don't. Do about it. They, oh, so. So you do. So you have said make claims, and you filed complaints against him, right? Uh, against the judge, against other attorneys. But if, but you're upset that they didn't it didn't go your way, so that gives you carte blanche to just say whatever the hell you want. Then you say something about them. Again, thirty two felonies for Matt Stacy. Go read, look him up. OSEN.net. Search. It's Garvin County. Is it Garvin County or some G County? McLean County? I don't know. Just look him up. Recent case. Logan Jones, Eric Brown. They're all in the same county. Read the bind over orders where the judges laid out the schemes and the millions of dollars 
that they funneled through their offices. Now, I wonder whether any of those millions of dollars made it to Gina Hendricks, Lori Faribault, other members of the Oklahoma Bar Association. Well, guess what? I'm going to federal courts, and I'm going to start investigating all of that stuff because I think that there has been some nefarious wrongdoing. So, so now he's alleging that the that the uh, all, the opposing folks who are who are filed this complaint against them are taking illegal funds. Let's keep reading. Okay, yeah, during these broadcasts, I disparage judges, the judiciary, opposing counsel, the OBA, and anyone with opposing views. Well, not anyone with opposing views, stupid views, certainly. Uh, and where did I do this? On my Facebook Lives. Complainant further submits that respondent made disparaging remarks and was disrespectful to police officers, state and county officials, and city employees. I was disrespectful. It, 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 it says that word, folks. Yeah. He regularly disrupts the peace when he attempts to retrieve um, public records pursuant to the Open Records Act. He also threatens state employees. This isn't just one incident. It's a it's a combination. It's a collection of behaviors that ultimately result in you um, disparaging the profession. I, I, I'm, I'm, I got suspended because... They alleged that I was disrespectful. I think that they're disrespectful and infringing on our constitutional rights. But, you know, that's just me out there asserting, you know, my rights to express my grievances to my government and petition them for change. Constitutionally. Again, 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 I said this before and I'll say it again. Attorneys are expected to act in a certain manner. It like I can say, I can I can occasionally say mean things about Chili because I don't like him. Sure, but we're talking about this guy is talking about making serious allegations against the judge and making serious allegations against opposing counsel in cases that he's that he's part of. Protected activity. We're also talking about him allegedly filing frivolous lawsuits against his ex-wife and his ex-wife's family. <laughs> First Amendment or freedom of speech, also constitutionally protected activity under the same First Amendment, or I don't know, to assemble. File, filing frivolous lawsuits against your ex-wife is not a First Amendment protected activity. My friends uh, and complain about my government conduct, which is protected under that First Amendment, uh, or press uh, because I record it and I show people what the government is doing and I share the news to people. So, you know, all that's protected under the First Amendment. And I'm pretty sure there's this thing called the 14th Amendment, which guarantees me equal protection regardless of race, gender, or any other thing, and, and, and I didn't give up those rights when I became an attorney. Nobody said you were! Stop strawmanning! Nobody said you gave up all of your rights when you became an attorney! I think I did. And I was disrespectful, according to them, to police officers. Wah! <laughs> what do you want me to say? Yes, I have been disrespectful to a lot of government officials, and I'm going to be disrespectful to a lot Bear in mind, you do not have a fundamental right to be an attorney. A lot more moving forward. Fuck you, Oklahoma Bar Association, Oklahoma Supreme Court, and every member of the Oklahoma Supreme Court. You're all liberal hacks, and I'm going to do everything I can to disband the Oklahoma Bar Association and to get a whole <sighs> lot of money. So anybody wants to know what my plan is, I'm going to sue them, and I'm going to ask for tens of millions of dollars, and I'm going to try to get Durbin versus state of Oklahoma in front of the United States Supreme Courts. I prefer to win in the federal court and here in the Western District and then the 10th Circuit, but I really want to go argue in front of the United States Supreme Court. So if you want to know what I'm going to be focusing my attention on, it's doing all the stuff I do every day anyway. It, it didn't change. If you want to know what my schedule was today, it was the same as what it was going to be. Um, and if you think that any clients were not prepared for this, guess what? I, I've been talking about this online. I've been telling clients we've had backup plans upon backup plans. And again, for the most part, if you got me to do something as a lawyer these days, it's because I really must have liked you. I work with a bunch of other attorneys handling the massive amount of workload that comes from representing hundreds upon hundreds of businesses in a compliance company called Tricom, which is not subject to me being a lawyer. So did I prepare myself for this? Well, again, I've been saying that for a long time. I'm not an idiot, but let's keep going. It says he regularly disrupts the peace when he attempts to retrieve public records pursuant to the Open Records Act. No truth to that. No hearing on that. They haven't proven anything with regards to that. Disrupts the peace. Well, that's a specific... Again, we're not there yet. ...legal definition, and I have not been convicted of a crime. 
Nobody said you had to be. So where'd you get that finding? Then it says he also threatens state employees that they will be arrested if they do not immediately comply with his open records request and has even caused an office to be on lockdown because he caused such a scene that the police had to be called. My understanding, I need to go check this and I guess we can go do a deep dive on this guy's uh, auditor activities. My understanding is that whenever he tries to, whenever he doesn't like the responses that he gets to an Open Records Act request, that's when he tries to threaten them with, with, uh, with, uh, either lawsuits or with, uh, criminal charges. I film. So anybody that called the police called because I was filming or using words. They had to call the police. Disturbing the peace and being disruptive can involve you using words. It depends on how you use those words and what words you say. So, like, like you, can, you can be charged with disorderly conduct if you're screaming at the top of your lungs in a residential neighborhood um, at 8 o'clock at night. It caused a disturbance. <sighs> Brian Showman, thank you for the $2. Liberal hack here says bring it on. And I told them that if they violate, they'd be arrested immediately. Well, first of all, let's let's correct what I've done. I have educated members of the government that in Oklahoma, the open Are you sure you've done that? Open Records Act carries a provision that says failure to comply with it constitutes a misdemeanor under the laws of the state of Oklahoma. That's a fact. It's the laws of the state of Oklahoma. It's in the Oklahoma Open Records Act, Title 51. Go read it. It says it right in there. Title 21 of the Oklahoma statutes, which is criminal procedure, I think it's 21, maybe 22. Anyway, says that I, as a citizen, have the right to effectuate. So what he basically does, he says like, oh, because I don't like what you did or don't like how you're pro processing my Open Records Act request, I'm going to enact a citizen's, citizen's arrest and have you charged with violating the, uh, the act. This is, that's, this is his shtick. An arrest for a misdemeanor, <laughs> which violation of the... Taco, thank you for the two dollars. Taco Bell hack here. Add nacho cheese to everything. Possibly. The Oklahoma Open Records Act is. I have educated members of the government that I have a right to effectuate a citizen's arrest, and I have that violation of the Open Records Act is a misdemeanor. So I'm accused of correctly educating members of the government about what the failure to comply with the Oklahoma Open Records Act could mean. And then they had to call the police because I was recording? I, I, I don't think so. Show me one occasion where somebody had to call the police because of conduct that actually constitutes a crime and doesn't just constitute filming in public or expression of my First Amendment rights to tell the government to go fuck itself. Which, by the way, the United States Supreme Court has declared that that specific word is protected. I don't know why they seem to think that it's not, but it is. There's case. I'm just, oh, I'm sorry. Can you, can you drop an F-bomb in the middle of court? And not potentially get caught up in a, either either uh, either a grievance filing or contempt of court if you drop f bombs in front of a judge. Law on that. And by the way, I'm gonna get all kinds of shirts that say. So no, <laughs> you 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 do not have license to say whatever whatever the hell you want, anytime you want, wherever you want. Print it up. Uh, stay tuned. Then what it says, quote. Respondent's conduct has been repeatedly reported on by the media, including his profanity-laced disparaging remarks about judges, the judiciary, and opposing counsel. I've said bad things about judges and lawyers and the judicial system and it being corrupt and judges being drunk. Okay, uh, computer doctors, when you join my Discord, um, there is going to be a... Uh, uh, a channel there called Court Case Shenanigans, and underneath that is a topic called 1A Auditor Attorney Ron Durbin, and that is where I have a link, uh, a direct link to the docket as well as to his um, channel. You're taking bribes and doing all these things that are correct. Yes, I've done all of that. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. Quote, this is what they say. Respondents' false and incendiary attacks on the legal system and judiciary are continuing 
as evidenced by complainant's amended complaint filed on March 6, 2024, wherein complainant brought new charges against respondent for similar and inappropriate behavior in violation of the Oklahoma rules of professional conduct. Again, they haven't proven anything, but they've alleged that I've gone around and, I don't know, asked for government records and told them to stop handing out stuff. Yes, folks, I am. Let the haters take over. I'm guilty of standing up for all the things that you've watched me for six years. Go for you. Thank you for the 199 super chat. I can't do what I want. <laughs> Therefore, corruption. Here, Bro. Fight for tooth and nail. I, I, I gotta tell you what happened yesterday. Think, think CJ Griffin, you. you'll have a lot in common. Yes, I'm gonna get a hold of him. I, I know, I think I know who you're talking about. He's charged with something down in the Gulf Coast, Galveston area, Donna Kennedy. Thank you. So, oh my God, Donna Kennedy. Thank you so much for the super that's going on in the state of Oklahoma. But if you don't think that I'm going to bring attention to all of this with every bit of the platforms that I have, yep. If you don't think that. You can file for a mandamus to compel the production of rec what what records in his complaint? You can also take the officials before a grand jury. What? Okay. Please. All right. I I, I got it. Uh, computer doctors, with all due respect, I got to ignore you until the until I until you could tell me that you've actually read the complaint and at least have a modicum of understanding of the Oklahoma's rules of professional conduct and also their um uh disciplinary rules all right moving on that i'm going to do everything i can to make this a big issue nationally yep if you don't think that i'm going to try to do what they did in louisiana and texas and challenge the mandatory requirements of being part of the bar association because the membership in it disgusts me and infringes on my rights of free speech yep i'm going to try to do away with the oklahoma bar association and if anybody wants to know what i've been okay so with all due respect even here's the problem at ass hat even though I'm not a member of the New Jersey uh, Bar Association, I am still subject to the rules of professional conduct for the state of New Jersey because the, uh, the disciplinary committee for the state of New Jersey is handled by the, the, the judiciary. In Oklahoma, my understanding is while the rules are adopted uh, the, the rules that they adopted come from the Oklahoma Bar Association. The, 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 the disciplinary procedure is, all, is still done by the judiciary, not by, a pri by the private organization. I've been waiting for, let me just explain to you what I've been waiting for. You see, in the law, you have to have a judi justiciable claim. A justiciable claim. And in order for you to have a justiciable claim, you've got to have damages. There can be nominal damages in some circumstances with regards to the- No. But- No. Well, what do you mean by damages? You have to have an actual infringement. And until the- What are you talking about? Damages against who? You can be, you can be brought up for discipline if you're caught, if, if, you're, um, if you're given a DUI as an attorney. If you, if, what? If I, as an attorney, if I get, if I get hooked up for a DUI or one or two, whatever it is, I can be subject to discipline by, by the disciplinary committee. Oklahoma Supreme Court did this. Until the Oklahoma Supreme Court did this, I had not been actually damaged. Now that they have suspended my life oh. without a Oh, that's what he's talking about. Without a trial, without confronting any witnesses, without reviewing any evidence. He's saying he's been damaged by virtue of this interim suspension. Without allowing me to file, I filed a motion to dismiss under the Oklahoma Citizens Participation Act, which says that all my conduct is protected, and it really does. It says that all my conduct is protected in Oklahoma law. But you can't, but you were already, but you, your motion was denied because you can't file a motion to, dis, motion to dismiss uh, during a discipline, during this. Uh, this does not permit you to file a motion to dismiss. No case should be able to be brought against me. I brought a motion to dismiss in this case, and they refused to hear it. They won't even. It's not. No, it's not that they refused to hear it. They denied you. They read it. They heard it on the papers, and they denied you. I file a motion to dismiss to challenge any of these allegations, but they're going to take them all as true. You stupid. Sorry, I almost said. I almost said a. I almost said a word. Suspend me. Well, now I'm going to take them and their happy asses to federal courts where they're not going to get the same favorable treatment, I don't feel. And 
this entire order. Folks, that's it. The rest of this just says that I'm suspended and I'm ordered to show cause. Uh, I was ordered to show cause. Oh, yeah, and then they said, my respondent argues, among other things, that the OBA general counsel's office is corrupt or inept and or that the OBA cannot support the allegations against him. Yes, I do allege that. Thank you for pointing that out. So they don't say anything about that. And then they say, upon consideration of the verified complaint, verified amended complaint, and application for emergency interim suspension, so just reviewing those things, that they deem that I pose an immediate threat of substantial and irreparable public harm. Wow. Eyes all around. Thank you so much. In 1999... News on six. I wonder, did they, did they, did they run the full story and go? I got suspended for you, literally none about clients because I don't do anything. Yeah. What? Read the story. News on, news on six. I wonder, did they, did they, did they run the full story and go? I got suspended for you, literally none about clients. Motherfucker. At least, at least three of the, at least three of those grievances were against. Former clients of yours, you you lying sack. Three of the three of the grievances filed against you as part of this complaint were by former clients of yours. Because I don't do anything, and they can't prove any of the bullshit allegations. But they can say that I said all these mean things. Because guess what? I say mean things about bad people all the time, and I stand behind what I say. And yeah, I think that GT Bynum in Tulsa is corrupt. I think that Blake Ewing is a felon or should be a felon for what he did, and he works for Mayor Bynum. That's what I think. I think he should have stopped cheating on his wife all the times that he was cheating on his wife, too. I'm sorry. People are scumbags. I don't know why me talking about it is a big story. I know I'm not supposed to talk about people having affairs, and that's not polite conversation. But when you live in a glass house, you shouldn't throw stones. And when you're in those positions, and I hear the diatribes from them and, and the espousals of this moral elitism it disgusts me because I know who they are. I like how he doesn't give specific statements about where, where, where they, these people who have filed grievances against him, where they have said similar uh, statements on par of what he said against him. He, he doesn't have any specifics there. I know what kind of people they are. You know why Blake Ewing's businesses failed? Because he was too busy screwing his assistant to Jesus. pay attention to his businesses. And then when one of them burned to the ground, he used all of that money and all of his other failing businesses and stripped them all. But yet he's running the mayor's agenda. That's interesting. That's really interesting. That's, that's the mayor we have in the city of Tulsa, folks. And I'm not supposed to talk about that. We've got a judge that drives drunk. We've got a judge whose daughter stabbed her and the judge worked to hide the fact that it was a domestic abuse and keep her daughter out of trouble. She's not in trouble. We've got the Tulsa Police Department has completed their investigation into drunk Judge Holmes, but the Tulsa County District Attorney's Office, Steve Kruzweiler, does nothing about it. Maybe it's because he shares similar facts and that his daughter stabbed him too. Yep, that's right. The DA for Tulsa County's daughter stabbed him as well as the judge. What? That's crazy. Yeti Mountain Trading, uh, thank you so much for the $5 super chat. We're really here in central freaking Oklahoma. We're going to make it here. We're going to build an entire channel. We're going to do nothing but work to uncover the corruption of government. That's what I invested to do four years ago. I guess it's now almost five. Four, February 3rd, 2020, four years, a little bit. And that's what I decided to do then. Look, I made good money being a lawyer. Really good money being a lawyer. I was married to a really terrible woman and I hated life. Hated it. Despised it. It was terrible, folks. There it is. I've made a lot of money. I've made, profited, I'm not, you know, the IRS, a lot, a lot in a year. I've had a lot of good years. The last five years, I've made less money than the first 10 of my career, and I've been happier fighting for what is right. You know the clients that got hurt are all the pro bono ones. The only ones I really had left were the pro bono ones that I was doing for free in criminal cases because they're charged with crap stuff, and they can't get a, a good lawyer to defend them. And so I was doing that because I felt it was right. Those are the people who get hurt in all this. Not me. I mean, it's me. I lost my license, I guess. Uh, suspended. When do I get a trial? Bob's your uncle on that one. Don't know. Uh, we're going to go. Through. Well, you're going to f you find out later on. All of this stuff. We're going to expose all of this stuff. But I just wanted to come and go live and, and make sure everybody understands that this came out yesterday. And I'm sorry for not doing it live yesterday. But if you, unless you've been living under a rock, you know that yesterday was a solar eclipse. That's not going to happen for another 20 years. 
and I blew off everything yesterday, and I took my son and my nine-year-old daughter, and we drove over to Arkansas so we could see the 100% Corona uh, event uh, of the 100% eclipse. That's what we did yesterday. And I don't know why, but I had a premonition that this was going to happen yesterday, and it all just sort of fits. Yesterday was a sign. This is a sign. I, look, I, I believe in signs. I believe in, 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 in karma. I believe in trying to do the right things. And the fact that this happened yesterday on the total solar eclipse, it's just one more indication to me that whether it's right or wrong, I'm going to believe that there's something bigger at play here, and I'm going to keep going along. And uh, that makes me dangerous to these folks because I am not going to stop. And it doesn't take away the the awesome, uh, you know, uh, equipment and uh, gear and setup and things that we have. And the thing, that's what it is because we're working on a sponsorship with a company called Tilta. Definitely, folks. I don't get it. Like, that's, that's the whole thing. I'm interim suspended without a trial. There's no trial date. There's no right to a speedy trial. There's no, but, but, oh, and here's the other thing. And this is why I didn't get a trial. In case you want to know why I didn't get a trial, they were going to give me a trial. And the reason why they stopped is because I was going to broadcast it and report it. No, I, I, yeah, here, here comes with the bullshit. They didn't want me to do that. So that's what stopped it all. We'll, we'll expose all of that. But they went ape shit. You can go watch the video. They didn't want me recording it. Well, this is public. And if it's public, we're going to go to the federal courts if they want to fight us on our right to film it all. I'm going to broadcast it all. So they want to do these trials? Let's go. I don't have anything to hide. There's nothing I'm ashamed of. I, I fought for people hard. I fought against five years. This, the wheels of justice move slow. Uh, so I'm a pragmatist. I don't expect to have a solution to this tomorrow. Uh, I don't expect to have a win tomorrow. Do I expect to win tens of millions of dollars from them one day? I do. Am I going to sue them and all these other jokers on 1983 violations? You absolutely better believe it. And by the way, every complainant who filed a complaint against me, I've now suffered damages against them. So I'm going to name them the federal lawsuit for libel, slander, intentional affliction of emotional distress, and all the other claims. So isn't that the, the isn't all of that the same claims he made in the frivolous lawsuit you filed against his ex-wife and her family? Seems to be a pattern. They'll all be all the complainants will be seeing me in federal courts as well. So that's all that the bar association has done is give me damages to now go sue all these people. So we're gonna go do that, and I'm gonna have fun doing it. And they're going to not have fun doing it. Uh, and they're not gonna have fun when I do depositions, which I have the right to do in this bar case still. And I video those depositions and I broadcast every freaking one of them. I'm going to reveal all of your misdeeds to the World Bar Association, every deposition, every discovery response, everything I know about every bad lawyer, every complaint I have filed against every lawyer. I'm suspended. I'm going to publish it all now. Why not? Can't do anything more than take my license from me. They've already tried to arrest me three times. I'm not going to give them the pleasure of doing of, of cussing at them again where they can arrest me for, for saying the F word again. I'm going to get a ruling on that and win a lot of money for that one. But uh, we're going to deal with this in federal court on that stuff. So that's what I'm going to do. And then the rest of this is just, again, I'm suspended. And then I got to tell people, my clients, within 20 days. Again, I've been open about this. Everybody's known about it. All my clients already knew about it. Duh. Uh, Ron doesn't. I just reported myself in the third person. I will never intentionally break the freaking rules unless I just absolutely don't agree with the rules, like keeping bar complaints confidential and things like that. I decided that rule was stupid, so I decided I wouldn't follow that rule. Stand by that decision as well. I still think that my decision is correct in that. Uh, so anyway, that's what we got going on. Tomorrow, we will be live. Okay, this is going to be the last video, and this was the video that was, uh, this is the live stream that was done eight hours ago, apparently, with his, uh, conference hearing. It's, it, it there's not, uh, we're not going to, it's 41 minutes, but we're, there's a lot we could skip through. So, um, it's not going to be that long. Oklahoma Bar Association. The Oklahoma Bar Association is where we're at. We're here, um, for a scheduling conference in a case where, you know, they suspended me for my Facebook lives talking about judicial corruption in the state of Oklahoma. If you don't believe me, go read the order suspending me. Uh, so me and my little pillow are going to... Why won't you tell them to read the complaint filed against you? ...go in here and have our scheduling conference. Uh, as you know, the Oklahoma Supreme Court, without a hearing, without any rights to anything, without any evidence, uh, entered in a uh, suspension without giving me any kind of trial. So now they're going to try me. They gave you the chance to respond and you were able to respond. Again, this is an interim suspension. It's not permanent. He was suspended. So basically what they've done is they said, hey, we can't do anything else to you. So, um, cause they can't suspend me twice. So I figured. No, but they can make that suspension permanent. Hey, we come on over here and we would, um, we would, uh, 
bring a, bring a, a little uh, bit of transparency to this. Now, I gotta say that they've entered an order that says we're not allowed to record in this public hearing, that we're not allowed to record in this public. Or, or they could say you're suspended for five years. They can, they can dictate a timetable. Um, they can make it permanent. They can make it like five years. They can make it three years. Hearing. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. They've got three highway patrol officers here. Um, three highway patrol officers here. Let me turn it around so you can see this. You got three hypos here. You got two right. Oh. You got two right there. You had another one up at the front. So all for me, all because all because I record things. They don't like that I record things. So you're gonna come watch us. That's as we as we have read from the complaint. It's not about him recording things. Uh, and find out. Have you already been inside? Have you already you already went inside? Yeah. Okay, so can, I, can we interview you? Yeah. All right, what's going on inside? Four state troopers hanging around. There's uh, an individual I was outside the hearing room, and it's uh, access only. That's uh, James Freeman. Uh, I really, I really don't like him, um, and I'm, I'm going to keep my, my words uh, limited when talking about James Freeman. Um, he's easily one of the most hateable. Uh, Auditor slash cop watchers out there, but yeah. Only so uh, he was. What do you mean it's access only? You have to have a, a, a card. You okay. Know, a badge, yeah. So uh, he was pretty protective of the door when I went in, and uh, found out you're out here, so I came on out. Did they say anything about a phone or anything like that? Not to me. They didn't try to search you. No, there's no uh, entry point, no secure entry point. There shouldn't be. It's a public building and a public hearing, so yeah. they shouldn't do that. So yeah. hopefully, uh, hopefully they don't. Maybe they learned their lesson from last time when I went in here recording yeah. and told them to go screw themselves if they thought I wasn't going to record. When I got a copy of that order that said I couldn't record, I immediately responded back and said, I'm going to be there to record. Yes, Grande Johnson is here. Mm -hmm. hey uh, Earl, uh, let me show you Grande Johnson. Hang on. Y'all say hello to Grande Johnson. Uh, I thought that was I thought that was James Freeman. Everybody. He came to town to support. Never mind. Support. We really appreciate James being here. Uh, we've got Lee here. Wait, that is James. What the hell? When, since when is he called Grande Johnson? Uh, we got Josh here. Look, he's working with the C200. We gotta hurry up, guys. We got seven minutes till I'm gonna be late for this I'll hearing. Go ahead and sneak in there. Then. I'll oh, you go ahead. ahead. You go ahead. You want the All body right. cam? You want the body cam? No, 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 you're sneaking. Yeah, I'll wear it. Well, you wanna sneak in now, so you probably don't uh, want the body cam. Yeah, that's fine. Then. That's what I did. I, I gotta, didn't have a phone. You got your, you got it recording in your yeah, pocket too? Doing it. Yeah, and no, I'm doing an investigation. Yes, go do your investigation. You, we'll, go, in, yeah, we'll be in there. Yes, 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 sir. So by having a, so by having a clipboard. That makes him press. Thank you for coming. I just went, went in and go in with them. We're gonna be right behind. And a notepad. We got some other folks over there. I think that's from uh, Lawton. They're from Lawton. Um, so, oh, and then we got everybody say hello to Earl. Er Earl came as well. Earl's gonna be Earl's gonna be holding the camera. So we're gonna have Earl hold the camera. Earl, this is how you move it. Left, right, up, down, uh, all that good stuff. I think I'm mic'd up. Is this on, Josh? Yes, it's on. It's on and rocking. I'm it's on and rocking. This is nifty. Hi, good rocking. morning. Hi everybody. <laughs> you have a pocket? I do. Here you go. Would this be too heavy, you think? Probably. Yeah. We can put it in Josh's fanny. Josh! You get the, this is a great recorder, so oh yeah, let me get you this stuff out of this And then I'm gonna go with this one. Oh we have GoPro stuff too. Do you wanna wear a Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we All the fun things this morning. Yeah. We gotta hurry though, we have six minutes. Six minutes, man. Six minutes. And then we also got the screw metric shirts in here. Oh yeah, screw metric. Fuck metric. Oh yo, hello from Alaska. I need to go to Alaska. I need to. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's cool. Oklahoma. Alberta, Carolina, Minnesota. Okay, I got you. Here, put the, your mom's basement. I love that. Let's see if they tell us to stop recording or not. And we also made um, press passes. Here's mine. In case you can't tell, it says Earl Clitter.
Hi, good morning. Good, how are you? Let's go see how his investigation is going. I'm going to tell you, I ain't got nothing else. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just a dumb guy at the bottom of the ladder. Can we ask how this investigation is going? Cringe. Uh, we have a... Uh, uh, this is uh, this is like watching LARPers. This is like watching LARPers in a fantasy in a fantasy medieval setting. The setting. Trooper Morgan Harp. Hello, Mr. Trooper Harp. And, um, we have uh, Trooper Ellison. Badge Hello, Mr. Harp, Trooper Ellison. Did I get your badge number for the yeah, nine thirty-eight? Nine thirty-eight. I appreciate it, boss. Um, Trooper Ellison uh, doesn't want to give his first name. I know boss is going to be mad later. They oh. told me when I do fill out my reports, I need first and last names. Uh, but he doesn't want to cooperate. We can always give us our names. He doesn't have to. Uh, no, I. You know what I. You know what that's that's being disrespectful to other LARPers. Like this is this is even more cringe than that. He doesn't have to cooperate with my investigation. He has his rights. Did you read him his YouTuber rights? Uh, I respect the stash, dude. <laughs> yeah, I can't wear one. You let him come with a chin. Yeah. It takes me too long to grow one. So. You got the men's restroom. I have no idea. Is that the one you want? It's a nice little building. Um. <laughs> hey, you want to see something gnarly? Identify. Are you going to show me your thumb? Yeah, I'm going to show him the chunk of thumb I cut. We love that. Well, he was cutting me onions, and then... <laughs> so I was using a regular knife, right? And I'd already cut him up, but there was like this much onion left, and I saw one of those accordion slicers, and I was just pouring these off. I found a bill. I got you down at 6-1. Yeah, let's I go. I you down at 6-1. Alright, go. You should have read them their rights. This is some nice stuff. This is a pretty nifty building. Sorry, guys, we lost you. So, right now, uh, they are refusing to let us go in there because they haven't wanted us for um, weapons or anything like that. So, let's see if we can go back in there and still keep connection. Okay, I'm glad well, we're back. So you guys just missed quite a bit. Hang on, let me flip this around. Oh yeah, what happened? Okay, so um, they got pretty upset with us for recording, obviously, but we were sitting there. Obviously. And they kept calling us out for having our phones out, and they never once said that it would be under. Let me catch my breath. Under a threat of arrest, and then they threatened to take Ron's phone. So Ron went ahead and took off his belongings and stuff in case they arrested him like they do so well and then um one by one they kind of walked us out um of the area and into the lobby where a very rude man threatened to take our phones as evidence <clears throat> this is the very rude man it's okay they'll be dead in a few years of old age thankfully jesus i'm gonna go piss on their graves when i see their name in the obituary fucking scumbags Oh, be mad. Thank you, Brian, for the $10. Imagine if Woodward and Bernstein follow the rules of investigative techniques. We'll never have heard Watergate. Yeah, sure. Your kid's going to get the defense. Joshua, shit. Joshua. Oh, my goodness. Per usual, he always has some nice words. Fuck those cronies, dude. Hey, I got to take a video in a state trooper hat, though. That's pretty cool. It is on Facebook. Yeah, he's very triggered. You guys want to see me in a state trooper hat? <sighs> yeah. Jesus. All of us are just wound for sound today, as you can tell. Um, so yeah, we'll definitely have some good stuff for you guys here within the next day or so, a couple of days. Um, I'm assuming the hearing is out and everyone's getting kicked out? <laughs> yeah, Wrong more than jail? likely. I don't know. Stay tuned. That, I really pissed that trooper off and I was like, 22 better at the day, killed themselves because of fucking pieces of shit like you. Yeah, they definitely aren't happy with us, but who's, who's to give a shit? <laughs> Not this guy. We have shitty sun views. I mean, I'd make a comment about the lack of father figures, but um, I feel like that would be, I'd be doing the same thing that he's doing. So I'll, I'll just keep my mouth shut. See? <laughs> There's a problem. Maybe the solution. <sighs> Another fun day. Should have farted in that state trooper's head. Oh my god. <laughs> there's security cameras. They were not being very durbinable. Very undurbinable. Very undurbinable. And the sun is not with us today. There we go. That was something. 
I knew it was gonna be a circus, that's why I was like, oh, we gotta all go. So yeah, Ron should be out momentarily, and we can uh, we can get his point of view on things. So. Oh, what they they have a recording of something else? Hold on. So yeah, Ron should be out momentarily, and we can uh, we can get his point of view on things. So. I did start to record while we were in there for you guys since we lost connection. Uh, there it is. All I need you to do is order me to do so. Turn off your phone and take it out. I turned off my phone. Now it's at this point in time which Ron does turn off his cell phone and they start freaking out about everybody else that's recording the world. My brothers and sisters go fight in a bullshit war. That is Joshua as he is being escorted out of the room. Now, mind you, this is a public meeting. This is not. This man is not a judge. He has no power. He has no anything to tell anybody what the fuck, what the frick to do. <laughs> Language, young lady. So they then continue to ask if all of our recording devices are off and so on and so forth. It's really just being typical scumbags that they are. So let's just wait on Ron and see where he's at with the situation this morning. How many people in the live? Nice. You wanna hold it? Yeah. Thanks. Oh, it went limp? It did. All right, so yeah, the state troopers were not. Let me get this fixed here. Oh my God. Okay, it's just not gonna work. Can you not figure out your own equipment? Uh, state troopers were obviously not thrilled Uh, I guess not. Sorry, I'm having real, yeah, real re-re moment here. All right, sorry guys, we had some, uh, yeah, the, the gimbal went uh, a little bit stupid. So basically to fill you in, when we got downstairs, the state trooper started trying to grab people. He tried to wand me and I tried to rip his wand out of his hand. Uh, we got into the meeting and we're sitting down and then after Ron told him he would return, turn his recording device off, I got up and was like, this is why fucking veterans kill themselves every day. Because uh, our government's a joke. They're not beholden to the same rules the rest of us are. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for, hey, by the way, that- Herder, fight the power. No, we don't need no government. Last video we did the OKC cop. We thank you guys for all the support, the new subscribers. Uh, Leslie McKee, Tammy, John D. Nicolo, Dasfoot, uh, Mexican Free Press. I know I'm forgetting some more, so just shout out to all the people I've been seeing in the stream since the very beginning. You guys have been awesome. And the emails and messages I get from you guys straight up sometimes make my day. I come into the office in the morning, I'm a cranky bird in the morning, and then I get messages from you guys in my email. You can email me at josh at gorilla publishing dot, or gorilla pco. Sorry. I'm a little fired up and I smoked a fat balloon before we went inside, so let me try that again. You can email me at josh at gorilla. Uh, he said, he, uh, he apparently said to um, the cops that um, you're like, you're, you're the reason why veterans kill them, like, uh, veterans kill themselves or like uh you know there's like 15 veterans kill themselves every day or something like that because of you guys like something like that philipeco.com <clears throat> and i'm quick to respond so but yeah we're out in front of uh, satan's temple and not even the cool satan's temple uh we're just oklahoma bar bar association so yeah he, he flat out told us bob that ron asked him he's like are you wanting everyone and they said no just us looking for recording devices so, Huntington Township, man, good to see you as well. Been seeing you since the beginning, too. Hey, Walking Dead, man, thanks for the uh, kind words. We truly do appreciate it. I had to step outside for a minute. Hey, you guys want to see a video of me wearing a state trooper's hat? After the state trooper kicked me out, he left his hat unattended. So I put a note in it that said, you're a punk-ass bitch. Allegedly. Oh, fuck, got him. Oh, he got him, bro. You totally own that cop. He owned that state trooper, bro. Uh, <sighs> Hold on, guys, I just saw something funny. So that's what they're doing right now. And then there's the... Yeah. Imagine thinking you're doing... Imagine thinking that you're making a difference with this kind of conduct. Gum, uh, and... You, they were, they basically remind me of the, uh, uh, the pro, uh, the Palestinian protesters blocking highways. Yeah, you're doing so much good work. I mean, all you're doing is just pissing people off, trying to get to where they need to get to. And then, I'm just kidding, I just couldn't do it anymore, I didn't want to work the long hours. And then I worked, like, highway safety and, uh, weed farms. 
and uh, Ron hollered at me to come do this as he does with a lot of veterans around here. He's always on us like, do better, do more. Love you, Tammy. So, you know, everyone's got to make a living. As long as your living doesn't involve trampling someone else to get there, by all means, do it. And like I said, that guy seemed cool. I'll even be honest, there was two troopers in there, the ERT guys. No way, Tammy. What years were you in Cleveland? Uh, so We're going to skip to where, where Ron comes back, because uh, I can't deal with this guy's bullshit anymore. All right, here we go. Here comes Ron and Earl. Well, what's the word? So they fucking just, no discovery. The bird is the word. I'm like, I'm already suspended. Why are you in a hurry? No discovery, no nothing. They just set it for like May 20th for trial and said, you should have already done discovery, even though they stayed the case. Like these fuckers. They didn't stay the case. They continued the case. And they, they, they're terrified of cameras. Like that's, that's what they were afraid of. They were afraid of y'all, everybody seeing me get absolutely railroaded. Well, guess what? We recorded it. I had a damn recording going. Plus my watch was recording. <laughs> Where's James and everyone else? Oh, they're still doing their, they're still doing their investigation. They're still doing here, you want? There's that state trooper up there who uh, has a tiny penis. Yeah, but well, guess what? You get to sue him now. He put his hand, he battered you and assaulted you. I know, and I, but you know what? We get to file a complaint against him for doing that, and we get to file a civil rights lawsuit, because he's being Sure you can. What's his name? Absolutely. Hold on, I got questions for you. Oh, God. I'm not, I'm not going to let this guy have his thing. He, he's going to be just, uh, yeah, that. Yeah, you want the phone? Here. Here's Ron. He can give you the rundown. I was just talking. It's aiming on you. <coughs> All right, everybody. So what just happened? Oh, let me take my hand off the camera. Uh, what just happened was I got screwed. Uh, they didn't like cameras in the hearing room, as you saw. Uh, they think that they can uh, take a public hearing and make it private. And they kept saying, oh, my God, you're saying mean things about the Oklahoma Supreme Court. They've already suspended me for saying things about corrupt lawyers and judges. And he's going to threaten me with contempt. You think they're going to send me to jail for recording? And what they didn't, I don't know if you saw this or not, but he really didn't know what to do when I started taking off my bracelets no, and stuff. Um, he's like, he's like, doing? he's like, what are you doing? So I, I wear, I wear bracelets. Uh, these, these are all like reminders of my kids and stuff. Each one means something very important to me. And uh, so that's why I never take them off. And so uh, when he says that, I start taking off my bracelets and the guy's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm getting ready to go to jail. I don't need to be able to have to take all this stuff off on my way to jail. So I'm going to take it off and hand it to somebody so you can arrest me for uh, recording in this public meeting. Uh, it was at that point he didn't really know what to do with himself anymore. Uh, and then he, and then I told him I turned off my phone from recording, and that's true. I did turn off my phone from recording. Uh, whether or not I had like five other recording devices or not going in that room, stay tuned for the long form video of this because, well, somebody was recording in that room. Oh, awesome. Uh, or somebody's, or multiple somebody's, or, well, We'll see. Uh, with that said, they set my trial for May 20th. They would not give me any time for discovery, even though I'm already suspended, so we're really not in a hurry here. Uh, the delay cost me delay, so they've even refused that, which makes them look even more epically bad. So all we've done today is establish that they're scumbag pieces of shit that don't want to give a fair trial. Again, bloggers get disbarred and suspended for stealing from clients, from having sex with clients, for not following through with what their clients need, for... Uh, which is which is one of the allegations against you, where you apparently file uh, uh, file a petition on behalf of a mom and child who were involved in an accident and then did jack shit with it for several years. Stealing from clients, drug habits, getting criminally convicted for things like rape and, and assault and battery on, on, on women. There's lots of good reasons to suspend an attorney. It is not a good reason to suspend an attorney because he says disparaging thing about judges in the judicial system, all of which are true on social media because I didn't give up my constitutional First Amendment protected activity rights when I swore an oath to the freaking Bar Association. So uh, as far as uh, that's all concerned, they can go to damn. You don't swear an oath to the Bar Association. You swear an oath to the um, Oklahoma Constitution and the United States Constitution, just like I swore an oath to the uh, New Jersey and New York Constitutions and the U United States Constitution. Help. This is not tobacco. Uh, I don't smoke cigarettes anymore since so February 3rd, 2020, heart attack number one. Also, February 3rd, 2020, heart attack number one, when I decided that I didn't really give two shits about the money, and I really just wanted to spend time doing the right thing, having a good time, spending time with my son. I mean, look, my son gets to go to work with me. And we get oh, God, that's so sad. He's fight for this kind of stuff every day. And yes, he's a long-haired hippie. And yes, y'all give him a hard time in the comments about... 
about that Amish beard he's got going on? His beard. He's got a y'all. Y'all throw comments in there. You can keep his. I do not care. Thank you, Jesus. That's fine. He looks good. Oklahoma community. The wagon. The wagon's right here. Come jump on the wagon. Torgy here says y'all need to y'all need to get subscribers over to the page. He thinks we should have a hundred thousand subscribers already. Thousand subs and Leo shave his head. Oh, it comes out today. Oh, it comes out today. At 12. At 12. I know he's just about to hit a protective order against a nine-year-old. Full form of that. Uh, we went over there because a judge issued a protective order against a nine-year-old. In Oklahoma, you're not supposed to issue a protective order against anybody under the age of 13. The law is absolutely crystal clear on that. That's the level of idiots that we've got on the benches in the state of Oklahoma that these corrupt people are trying to uh, hide from. So that's what I've got to say. Uh, that's what we've got going on. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. We're going to go. Okay, I think we heard enough. So, the um, so this was a scheduling conference. They got a trial set for May. Um, should be fun, I guess. Um, as you guys can hear, this guy is your bog standard First Amendment auditor, but who also happens to have um a bar license. Um, whether he keeps that license uh by the end of this year, um, I guess we're gonna find out but it's clear that he has gone full blown um a full blown auditor and just does not care um about um the integrity of the profession um and his uh, reputation as an attorney so it is what it is uh but i appreciate you guys coming in to watch and take a look taking a look at this guy we're going to be following his uh, case we'll um I'll I'll check and see if he actually uploads um his uh secretly uh recorded hearing. Um I doubt it's going to be very exciting because it's a, it's a scheduling conference. There's, usually those aren't very exciting. Um but we'll also definitely follow uh the trial um if that happens in May. So, thank you guys. Thank you guys all for your support and your subscription, your subs, all your donations. Check out my Discord. Hit the like button on your way out, and I will see you guys next time, okay? Take care. Adios. See ya.